so she when did she leave? Monday? Sunday? No. She left. I I dropped her off in New York Saturday morning. Whoa. And, yeah. I, and I've been a bachelor and will continue to be a bachelor until uh, this upcoming Sunday at 11 o'clock. So, Damn, son. I know. I know. It's just me and the dog hanging out all week this week, just going to work, coming home in the afternoon. Right. Eating what, eating what I want to eat, drinking what I want to drink, playing whatever <laughs> games and shit I want to do. <laughs> Doing podcasts like it's. I'm yeah, saying, living, bro. I know, living the high life, right? I just now saw your uh, right before when I was doing this update and everything. I was waiting for it. I uh, I went on Instagram and saw your um your live thing you did. It popped up, uh, you know, on the th- on the feed or whatever. Oh yeah. I didn't actually. See, I wasn't on Instagram when you went live, so I was. St- I was actually. I had a podcast earlier. I did. I saw that. I saw you had okay. one earlier. I was yeah. I was scrolling the trifecta page, and I'm just like, oh shit! Oh, he's in a podcast right now with uh uh-huh. well, who was it? Um, call sign mother, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's in the UK. Yep. Uh, yep. So he is. Um, I had a guy on last week who uh, is Ben Call Sign Milk, and uh, he's young. So mother is his dad. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Milk. <laughs> I know, right? He said, "Man, uh when we started playing it, when I started bringing my son out, um mm-hmm. and I had this nickname, it's like he's like, "Dad, can I call you like it's weird. Like what am I I'm calling you mother? Like what?" <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny. Uh-huh. That's funny. Oh, man. So Ugh. what's up, dude? Dude, I've just been to be honest, Working, working, yeah. working, working, working. Yeah. That's what I heard on your live stream. Yeah, that's it's what I've been doing on the live stream. It's what I've been doing in life. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, no, I um, I've had a pretty busy year work really? like work wise, personal wise, like okay, a lot of I mean that's kind of good going on. Yeah, it, it, it's good. Some of it, not all good, but you know. Uh, oh, okay. But I'm, I'm not on social media as much right now yeah. this year. You know, I haven't even gotten a chance to do any like video editing and stuff, which sucks. Oh, but, wow, okay. But I am still going to events, which I guess yeah, that's right. what matters, right? Like, right, right. Social media and stuff, whatever. But as long as I'm still making it out onto the field, that's what matters. Exactly. Yes. So that's what I've been doing this past year and uh yeah i i was told also that uh you have a check for me for all the people that have been coming on the podcast <laughs> right? apparently i'm the re- a trifecta talent agent re- or something referral like yeah referral yeah. marketing thing yeah that's all right <laughs> <laughs> for real bro um yeah that's right you can uh, make it out to maddie mo talent agency I just there we go the, the check all right <laughs> <laughs> that's it dude <laughs> Seriously, between you and then, uh, so yeah, definitely you and here in America, and then um, Marcus and Dan and a couple other guys over there in the uh, UK, they have been. That's how I found these last two guys. They yeah, messaged me yeah. and said, uh, Marcus, you know, talked to them, and so, mm-hmm. uh, and then Scuba, same thing. Like, yeah, that, that's kind of how the podcast has gone when I started. It was like, um, when I talk to one person, they'll mention just like what you did the original time, yeah, you know, mention right? somebody that I played, you know, Oh yeah, I played with this guy. Oh yeah. You should talk to this guy, you know? Oh, okay. And I'll hit him up, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's like a family tree. Oh, of course, dude, dude. You are like in like the lower webs of that right now. <laughs> like you're going through everybody, man. I love yeah. it. I love it. I can't, I, I, do I don't too. get every episode, but I do catch a lot of them. You know? Yeah, that's good. Oh no, I don't expect, well, especially creators, uh, content creators, we are uh, we're busy doing whatever we have to do to record the content, and then yeah. editing the you know doing the content or uh, editing the content and putting it out there. So it doesn't leave a lot of room for actually watching a whole lot of videos or listening to a whole lot of things, unless you're in a position where like you're driving long distance or you're um, you know when I was working like um, uh, like some of the guys have hit me up and said yeah man I work construction I I have my earbuds in all day I listen to you know. Yep, it's a yep. podcast, whatever. So, but if you're not in that position, it's uh, it's very difficult to actually sit down and do so. Because if I have time to sit here, um, I'm working. Like I'm exactly. editing. 
or I'm recording. Yep. So, yeah, yep. and I, so yeah, I, I totally understand. I totally understand. You know, I, when I used to be, you know, work in construction out in the field and stuff, I did the same thing. Like I had, yeah. I had podcasts and stuff that I listened to. Fortunately, you weren't out when I was doing that, so I can't. <laughs> I know, right? I know. But now, now that I'm now that I'm working in a desk setting and I'm, I'm yep. behind the desk and doing the estimating and stuff, it's a different work environment for me. So, like, I'll I'll throw your video on, I'll close the tab, I'll get back uh, to working on my estimates and stuff, and I'm listening to you in the background. Okay. And then the phone rings. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh crap! Up. Uh, yeah. Pause. Video. Pause. Then the phone conversation goes on for 20 minutes. Then I go sure. back to doing work, and I'm just like. Oh shit! I forgot. E Rock was talking. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I've yeah. done that so many times, man. Uh, so it, it literally takes me like one or two days to get through one of your podcasts. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's I'm not. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, not. There's not a whole lot of people that are um, that are in a position where they can uh, just listen yeah. or watch. Uh, you know, I was really surprised to to um, see that. Or, or hear from people that um, there's a handful, not a, not a lot, but I guess more than I thought. There's more people than I thought would be watching the videos either on Spotify or YouTube, and I was like, really? And they're like, yeah. I mean, it's not a it's not a lot of people as far as the total. It's just yeah. the um, the the there's the few that are like, yeah, I don't really like listening to just the audio. I like to watch it. I'm like, oh, okay. I yeah. rarely watch podcasts. I uh, I just listen to them. No, I uh, I'm a, I'm the YouTube guy myself. Okay. I do YouTube yeah. music, YouTube everything, YouTube podcasts. Gotcha. But uh, I I'll definitely throw you on like if I eventually when I get myself on the treadmill, right? I'll throw, <laughs> you, I'll throw you a podcast on and I'll be walking and listening to you. Or oh, I'll, do, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do rucking now is my new oh, thing nice. that I do on the treadmill. Yeah, Good. I I got into it with the um, with the Arclight event that we did earlier this year. So yeah. I knew that we were going to like a 40 hour, 40 hour light, I guess you can call it event, but we we're going to be on the field the whole time. And I was expecting to do some rucking you know not a lot but at least enough where i'd have to carry my stuff around so right i i panicked and like for four weeks leading up to the event every single day i, I got on the treadmill and i threw on my full kit everything yeah which weighed about 25 30 pounds and sure. i just walked i just walked with it the wow. entire time um and I, I, lost good, some, I lost some weight which was great yeah you look good man yeah <laughs> thanks yeah. i think i put it back on but we'll see <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> I fluctuate so so quickly, same. up and down, you know. Same dude, same. Oh, dude. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm definitely fluctuating this week. I mean, no, no nobody <laughs> now. So, <laughs> oh yeah, You'd be my the dad. Same way I remember when I was growing up, my dad was like, um, he was the same way, and it was uh, he'd have, um, you know, growing up in Cleveland, Ohio, you know, it'd get cold in the winter, of course. Oh yeah. So he had his he had a a whole set. A separate set of winter clothes not not like you know of course we have our winter jackets and that kind of thing but i'm talking like winter pants and stuff because uh he would gain so much weight in the winter you know it's cold he's not going out as much um holidays all that kind of stuff so and he would gain 30 40 pounds from winter time and then he'd lose it all in the summer and he had two separate sets of different his summer clothes were way smaller than his Winter clothes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I feel that. I feel that. I tend to wear the same thing almost every day. Like honestly, like I I'm wearing. I'm, I'm wearing this right now for the podcast, yeah. right? But my everyday dress is literally a polo shirt and jeans. Like yeah, every single day. I, I don't even sway. Yep. I just started wearing a, a hoodie. Um, Ooh. yesterday morning was uh yes yeah yesterday morning was a little chilly for South Carolina. Uh, it was in the forties. So I was like, Ooh. damn, bro. Okay. It's going yeah, to wake you up. <laughs> we're getting some of that up here for sure. I still have all the air conditioners in cause like last week it was a couple of days in the eighties and the nineties up here in yeah. uh, New Hampshire. But yeah, just yesterday I had the AC on. I only had the fan running and turn it on, went downstairs, watched TV for an hour or so, go upstairs, go to bed. And I'm like, holy crap. It's freezing the bedroom. <laughs> Pipes are gonna uh, freeze. What am I doing? So <laughs> Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah, AC's gotta come out uh this weekend though. That's yeah, you uh, got uh, window units? Yep, yep. I got oh, window yeah. units throughout the house. Yeah, they they suck, but they get the job done. So they get the job done. They're um it was uh when we lived in Ohio, before we moved down here, 
Mm -hmm. uh, we always had window units and it was, um, we do the same thing. Like growing up, my parents yeah. never had central air. In fact, most, most everybody on our street most didn't have central air. Didn't have central air. Central no. air wasn't something that came out, I think, until like, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe like the 2000s. Like most homes didn't have that. And to, and yeah. to pay extra to have that installed to your home, it was, oh my God. Oh yeah, you're, for real. You're losing dude. basement space at that point, you know? I'm telling you work. now. <laughs> I am curious, actually, now that you mention it, when did, uh, when did that come out? I am curious because, uh, I never had it. You know, I was growing up, my parents were kind of poor and most people on our street were like, they didn't have a lot of, you know, expensive stuff or, you know, everyone had one car, uh, older cars that we worked on. Um, and then I'm going to guess in the sixties it came out because when I met my girlfriend, who's my wife now, it uh, does say the sixties, it says really. Yep. By the late 1960s, new homes had central air conditioning and window air conditioners were more affordable than ever. In the yes, day. there it is. 1960s. Okay. Yeah. See, I was, uh, we didn't even have a microwave when I was growing up. Um, oh, wow. we, uh, yeah, we didn't have a microwave until I was like, right before I went to boot camp, like right before I went to military. And, uh, I remember when, uh, the big thing we always had, you know, we would do like, uh, Every couple weeks, we would do, my parents would do like a movie night with us. Mm -hmm. And it would be a Friday night or something like that. And uh, they, um, we, it was on VHS, right? <laughs> and uh, we'd pop some in the VCR, you know, a kid's kind of family movie or something. Yeah. And they would make, uh, they would make popcorn on the stove. Like they would buy a legit bag of popcorn seeds, put the oil in put the seeds in, put the lid on it and a big old steel pot. And, steel and pot. oh yeah, dude. And then, uh, and then they would salt it. And I mean, it tasted great for, you know, when, for kids. Yeah, yeah. And then they got an air popper when those came out. I don't know if you ever seen those. Yeah. They didn't last. I don't think they lasted very long. They weren't popular. So they're the ones that it's like, it's like a big bowl basically. Right. And you pour the, you pour the popcorn in, it has a little stick that stirs. Is that the one you're talking about? No, the, that's uh, those are like a movie theater popcorn style. The, those are like a heated plate or a pot, whatever that that pops in. Yeah. Yep. All right. So an air popper is a. Uh, it looked like um, almost like a juicer, right? It, it stood real tall, probably about a foot tall. It had oh, a, sh yeah. a plastic yes, chute I that did, came it out. Had the chute that comes, yes. So it pops all the way up and falls out the chute. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it was instead of a, a heated plate. It was hot air. So it was heated air that popped it. And the way that worked, like you didn't put oil in it. So it was just no. the seeds. And, uh, well, you know, I guess it's healthier. I don't know. But um, well, no, less it, oil, less trans fats, I guess. Yeah, right. And it was, uh, it was, it was the worst up. tasting popcorn ever in the world. It tasted like styrofoam. Well, it's because there's no <laughs> trans fats in it. All right. That's what makes the popcorn so delicious. I mean, you. Oh. You go to the movie theater, what, you're going to not put butter on your popcorn? Like, what For the hell real, bro. Like, yes. Salt it up, butter it up. Like, oh, let's yeah. Do this. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, tons of salt on it. When we uh, when we get, um, when we go to the movies, uh, it, it is, I put extra salt on it. And by the time I'm leaving, because mm -hmm. uh, we'll get a big bucket. And I love popcorn. I mean, I can oh, eat, same. you know. Yeah. And so when I leave, my lips are literally burning. Because mm -hmm. they have, you know, the little creases in them from the salt. <laughs> I'm the same way, dude. I'm the same way. Like, mm -hmm. we, at my house, we have popcorn at least twice a week. Just sitting yeah. around the house, just watching TV shows or whatever, you know, yeah. it's time to fuck at night. Let's pop some popcorn. We buy yeah. it in bulk at BJ's. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sure. Like, it's because, giant. Yeah, they're huge, giant Boxes. bottle things. We're just uh -huh. like, we go through it. I mean, we might as well. I mean, it's a it's a quick, easy snack. Yep. Um, the only thing that sucks is, like, the popcorn makers. Like, I, the best one that I found is the one that's, like, the huge bowl with the stick. Yeah. It spins, and then when you're done, you flip, it, you flip it over. Oh, yeah, that is – like, Yeah. That's – it's the best one. It's, like, 30 bucks, but – how often we make popcorn, we end up buying like a brand new one every single year because <laughs> eventually yeah. it just motor gets worn out. Oh, so out. that's like, you don't you don't get the um you don't get the microwave popcorn. You get the you get the popcorn oh, you put in that. T oh, dude, that's good. That's like yeah. movie theater popcorn. It, exactly, exactly. They got this like uh, uh, Orville Redenbacher makes this like 
it's it's so bad for you, but it's like this little yeah, butter the oil best. thing. Yeah, they make a butter oil, and you can use it as the oil to pop the popcorn. Oh, and you can use it as a topping. Like there you go, butter topping. So okay, hang on now. I gotta look up this damn cooker yeah. or this popcorn popper because I love. Uh, so my mom actually owns a popcorn stand. I ran the popcorn stand for a year uh, for a couple years before, before we moved to South Carolina. Um, yeah, if you just type in popcorn popper onto Google, you okay, should, you should see an option for a West Bend stir crazy popcorn machine, and it's literally it it just pops it into a bowl upside down, and then when you're done, yep. you flip the whole thing over. It's in the bowl, ready to go, but it has a little open. Oh, top. okay, it's a little uh, standalone. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great, dude. And then it's already in the bowl for you, and you can either eat it out of that bowl, or you can go ahead and just put it into a different what? bowl if you want. There's got a little open oh. top on the top of it. You can put your butter on there. And dude. It, let it drip in while it's spinning. Like, uh, <laughs> the thing is, is, I go through one of these. Like, it's 30 bucks, but I have to buy a new one every year because sure. after, after, so like a whole year, after a whole year, it just kind of doesn't work as well anymore. You know, it get, yeah, it gets kernel stuck in like the uh, the rotating. Yeah, it gets mechanism. gommed up, and yeah, yeah sure. So I'm sure, yeah. Meat. If if you don't, you know, do a deep clean on the thing every single time, like well, which we do, who, we do a deep clean. It's like oh, it's, okay, it, it's not the bowl part at the top. The clear part is all dishwasher safe, but yeah, yeah. the uh, the bottom part, right? Like you could put yeah. water in it, but you can't really like take it up. Uh. Uh-uh. And like clean all the gears and shit like that. No, I don't right. want to either. For thirty dollars, I'll just I'll just buy. That's them. what I'm saying. For thirty <laughs> bucks, once a year, big deal. Exactly right. Like not only that, whatever. but so now, okay. So let me ask you this. So then, when you uh, so you're buying the bags of popcorn seeds or the bottles of popcorn I'm seeds? I'm buying like these bottles of popcorn seeds. I see one them. right here that's recommended. Um, yeah. You know how Amazon has the oh yeah, so like the eight pound bottle. For, yeah. yeah, I'm seeing it right here. Eight pound bottle. Yeah, that I, that's basically what I get. The original. I'm going to bring this up on the screen. I'm showing people right now on that are. <laughs> so if anyone's watching this podcast instead of listening, um, I just brought it up on the screen for a minute here. You can see oh, dude, which one. Do you click the kernels because they also have that butter popper, like flavored oil on there too. Yeah. Did but, you see the. So this one is Dutchman's popcorn coconut oil, butter flavored oil. But. The oh, one right. you're talking about is Orville Redenbacher's? Yes, Orville Redenbacher's uh, popping and topping oil, which literally just takes, tastes like movie theater butter. Yeah, dude. I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure it's just like a synthetic melted butter, and it's probably the worst thing you would ever possibly eat. <laughs> but, I mean... Oh, they the- still sell... Oh, my God. They still sell hot air poppers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah! Wow. Well, I guess they, yeah, you can add flavoring to them, but yeah, okay. Well, anyway, yeah, that was uh, my parents. They had um, they had that, and then they got a microwave. And once they got a microwave, they got uh, the microwave popcorn. Microwave popcorn, man. My dad was yep. so excited. He was like, "Whoa, this is so good!" And um, <laughs> my parents yeah. used to, my parents used to do that all the time, but my mom. Really, when I was growing up, my mom really pushed for. She's like, "No microwave popcorn is bad for you. You've got to make the homemade pop popcorn. Yeah, you use the kernels. You got to use some oil and do it that way. It's healthier for you, right? Right. But of course, I found an unhealthy way to make that. <laughs> Don't we always? Like, yeah. No, we, we always do, right. man. That's uh, teenagers you know. are determined. You know what can I say? Have you seen those? Um... I mean, I'm sure you've seen those videos over the last uh, few years where uh, they people started frying everything, like mm-hmm. Twinkies, you know, deep fry or whatever, you know, fried Twinkies and fried Twinkies, Oreos, bananas, pickles, w- bananas, watermelons. <laughs> um, somebody deep fried a watermelon. I forget who. That's crazy. <laughs> no, yeah. Deep frying everything, and then I think I think the other trend was. Uh, like stuffing chicken, like seeing whatever you, it is you can stuff. In oh, chicken. okay. Really? Like, yeah, I, I've seen uh, just a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> people, people put like a lot of like just 
things that I look at and I'm just like, oh, this seems kind of strange. And then, of course, the TikTok video ends and I'm like, all right, uh, I, I'd probably take a bite of that. If I... <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> How am I not going to try that? You know, I'm in a foreign land. But... <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. There's a lot of things I would try that I've seen that, you know, people, the way they cook things, you're like, that's got to be the most unhealthy thing ever, but it looks so good. Mm -hmm. It looks so good. So I'm just going to. Hell yeah. Right. You know, hell, I've, I've sent a couple of recipes to the wife. And I'm just like, hey, I, w I want this. <laughs> see, <laughs> see what you can do. And she just yeah. said, oh my God, that's so, there's so much butter in that. And I'm like. <laughs> Is she uh, does she try to like stay like eat healthy and stuff like healthy oh, uh, groceries I, I and all that? I don't think you've ever seen my wife, man. Here, let me. Uh... Uh, I won't, only the pictures you've you've posted with her when you guys are standing, you know, next yeah. to each other when you're out she, somewhere. Yeah, she is. She's, she like a she's health big. nut, like a working out a, and stuff. She is a big old health nut, which is complete okay. opposite of me. Um, right, that's usually what happens. She's always in shape. She's always skinny. She's always beautiful. And okay. she's always out of my league. And I say that forever. We actually just celebrated our uh, six-year anniversary. Uh, Thirteen years together. Six years of them married. Uh, Congratulations, man. I, that's weekend. where I saw the – yeah, that's where I saw your post. Yes, probably. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, no. No. So she's on her cruise this week, and I'm just okay. hanging, hanging here at the house. They call it the six-year anniversary. They call that the iron anniversary, and it's supposed to celebrate oh. the strength of the relationship. Okay. Which, I mean, I can't think of anything more fitting than my wife out on some cruise somewhere. I'm not even worried about it. Meanwhile, I'm here <laughs> at home, and she's not even worried about me. So, Absolutely. I guess, a, I guess that's a strong relationship. I don't know. Oh, sure. <laughs> I mean, no relationship, no matter what it is, husband, wife, or, uh, you know, boyfriend, girl, whatever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, any, any long-term relationship is going to be, um, it's going to be a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Oh, for you know? sure. You got it's, your ups and downs. Like absolutely. Uh, we've, we've been through our high points and our low points and stuff. I mean, 13 years together, man. Like the Sure. I mean, I've been with her since 2010, you know? Yeah. And. We've had, you know, multiple different jobs, school, right, families, weddings. I mean, oh it's, yeah, it's a lot. But when you find that person that's uh, that's your one, you know, you that's just, it, man. You yeah, wait you, the street and you make it work. Yeah, you know? <laughs> absolutely. You make it work. You really do. That's a, um, you know, when you when you have it in your mind, like, hey, we're gonna we're gonna work out this thing, we're gonna work this thing out, or work, you know, make it work. Um, stronger yeah. together, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's uh it's always, you know, we're just, that's a real common, common thing, you know? And I, I wish more people would get back into, uh, that kind of mentality with the relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I was, I was talking to this guy a couple of days ago and, um, he said, uh, yeah, I've been with, I'm going to see this girl, um, and her and I've known each other since like elementary school. Yeah. And we have a thing for each other, but we can never seem to get our shit together to like stick together. You know, it's like, we're always at odds on something or whatever. I said, I think she's probably the one you're supposed to be with, bro. Mm -hmm. And, uh, he's like, I think you're right. And I want to, but she keeps saying, you know, keeps avoiding it or whatever. I was you like, know, oh, okay. It, you know, they always say that relationships are a two way street, but I, yeah. I think relationships are a little bit more than that. My yeah. uh, my grandmother said to me a long time ago, um, you can't – oh, Jesus. She said to me, you can't truly love another person until you truly love yourself. Absolutely. And a lot of people, you know, they'll say, oh, but I do love myself. I know who I am as a person. But then you're willing to change everything that you are as a person to be with somebody else. And you, you have that back and forth and then you regret the person for that. I, yeah, I think a lot of people want to be in a relationship because of all the, the sparkles and the happiness and stuff like that of being in a relationship. Yeah, but you need to take that step back and realize, hey, listen, if I'm not happy with who I am as a person, if I'm not happy with the things going on in my life, you know, if I, if I'm not happy with my career, if I'm not happy with you know getting through school, education, and stuff, if I'm having you know family issues and stuff like that at home that I need to deal with. Maybe I'm not in a position to be in a relationship and give it 
my hundred percent to another person. Cause mm. at that point, you know, that person, I'm a crutch for them, you know, that I would yeah. be feeding off that person, hanging off of them, you know, for every yeah, right. And it's not fair to them. And I think that's what's happening nowadays in a lot of relationships. And I think a lot of mm. people can relate to that, you know? Yeah. Best, best advice I ever got. You can't truly love another person yeah. until you love yourself. Get your own stuff, stuff figured out with, and don't be with the person because I can't, I can't be without them. Like, yeah. Be with a person because they support you in your life and you have that kumbaya, if you will, sure. that back and forth. That it's a 50 50, you know, it's a two way yeah, street. You got that chemistry and you, you work on it. And I mean, my, my wife is on a cruise in the Bahamas right now, right? She's going to bars. She's partying with her sister. They're having an absolute blast. I'm sure she's getting hit on, and I don't have any jealousy whatsoever because no. I I know my wife. I love her. She loves me. I yeah. don't have any of those fears or anything like that. We've had mm -hmm. a 13-year solid relationship. There's a lot of people out there that would not say the same thing or be in no. the same position as me. You know, I think that's – I would have to guess – if I had to guess, uh, jealousy is probably uh, up there at the top of the list as far as uh, destroying relationships. You know, oh, for on, sure. on both for, sure. for both people, because jealousy is, um, it, you know, its root cause is fear. It's fear. It, you know, it's it, it, insecurity leads to jealousy. Fear leads to insecurity. So, you know, it's this fear of losing whatever you have. And, or being, uh, being alone or being, yeah, being alone that person. And, and it comes yep. back to, again, like I said, like, you know, I need to be with this person. Well, why? Uh -huh. Well, I, I live with this person. If I'm not with them, then I, I lose my apartment or, you know, if I'm, I'm not with this person, then, you know, I, they're doing something for you that you're not yeah. doing for yourself. I mean, like, exactly. It, you can't have those crutches. It, it really all does come back to the personal level. If you are, not happy with yourself mm -hmm. and happy with the life that you're currently living, then you can't fully give your all to a relationship. I, I truly yes. believe that. I truly feel that. And it's, uh, it's, I read this, uh, I read this book and it, what you're talking about exactly, uh, what was, um, what I read in this book. I think the book was actually coach K. Uh, I can't remember what the name of it was, but it's one of his more popular books. And, um, he talked about the, um, the, uh, mentality of winning okay so as a coach and th this goes through you know so what you're talking about is someone's approaching the relationship uh in a way of how do i not lose in this yep. relationship as opposed to how do i win right it's not a conscious or how, or thought it's very subconscious win. Right, you know? and it's a uh, it's a it's a subconscious thing. We don't realize that we're thinking that way, mm -hmm. but when you approach something, whatever it is, uh, it, out of fear, like fear of losing whatever, losing a basketball game. <laughs> um, if you're coach, you know, I've seen we we see this every weekend in uh, college football, in basketball, whatever. You know, you can see by the play calling, by the uh, the the locker room talk with the uh, you know halftime talk and stuff. Uh, if the coach is coaching out of fear of losing as opposing to winning, you know, like I, I, I don't want to lose. So I'm coaching this way or I'm, I'm treating my relationship this way. I don't want to be alone. So I'm treating my relationship this way. It's a subconscious thing, but you're, uh, you're coaching to, uh, win. And while the book was like, Hey, coaching to win, I think it might've been something like that playing to win as a far, as far, uh, instead of playing not to lose. And it's a very subtle, difference in your mindset but um but you're absolutely right man where that comes from is uh is fear and if you don't have the self-confidence in you exactly. like that comes from in here man that you really you've got to have that you know no one can do it for you no one can feel that for you and you have, you have to, to do confident it. with the person that you yeah. are you know if it, it if there are things in your life that are just consistently upsetting you right mm -hmm. You don't need a relationship to solve those issues. You just need to solve those issues. You yeah, know? absolutely. It's it's you can't take that you know those problems and put them onto another person. It's not fair to that person. And yep. I feel like that's where maybe ninety percent of relationships kind of just fail. You sure. Know, or they just fall off. You know. You know you you have you know relationship problems with your mom or whatever, and yeah. you bring your girlfriend into it. So now your yeah. girlfriend has problems with your mom because your girlfriend can only hear your point of view, doesn't yeah. have a point of view. Like yeah. 
that's just never good, you know, like it's. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of that, man, it, you know, so listen, anyone that's listening or watching this, whatever, uh, these are pro tips from Maddie Mo. If, um, no, for real, like these are, uh, this is, this is good stuff. And if you're wondering, um, some of you young people out there, if you've never read these books, you don't actually have to read them if you don't want to, uh, it, you know, there's Audible. There's a lot of different options out there, but oh, yeah. there's a couple of different books. One, you know, like what you're just talking about, being happy, right? Like being content and happy with yourself. There's a really good book by Marcy Shimoff. is called Happy for No Reason. I read this years ago. Uh, you can get it on Audible. Um, okay, look look that up. It's a, and I'm talking to anyone that's listening or whatever. Definitely, if you're, um, if you're wondering like, oh, I don't know, like, you know, how to have a positive mindset in life. Okay. There's a lot of tools out there for you. Um, that's one book. And then the other one, like I said, coach K has a book. Um, I think it's something like, uh, coaching to win or something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, a lot of different tools out there. There's a lot of motivational speakers that really help you, uh, you know, focus on these kind of things and get your mind right. I'm going to tell you a really good practice is start your day off if you you know if you can if you have the opportunity to um you know meditation in the morning it doesn't have to be like some you know special thing like it's real basic you don't have to have you know formal types of mantras or whatever in your head you just look start out with start your day with uh what am i thankful for today okay. what am i thankful for in my life focus on that because it's real easy to get uh focused on the negative stuff um and, and kind of keep that trend going if you don't know how to break it. So that actually reminds me of my favorite quote I've ever heard in every, any movie. Um, the movie is Passengers with Chris Pratt and uh, Jennifer Lawrence. And there's a quote from the robot guy playing a bartender. If you've never seen the movie Passengers, it's basically a movie about um, – spaceship is literally traveling across the galaxy it's going to take like 120 years to get to a destination so it puts people in hibernation yeah. and what, there's an accident that happens and one of the hibernation pods wakes up and it's chris pratt he wakes up and there's okay. still 90 years to go on the trip whoa he doesn't know how to fall back asleep right um uh, if you guys never seen the movie i don't yeah, think i've seen that dude i i highly recommend it it is uh, okay. it's a great it's a thriller movie it's also a little bit of a romance so the wise sure, and sure. The stuff would enjoy that but there's a quote in that movie and i just sent it to your instagram trifecta and if you want if you okay. want you can go ahead you should be able to share it with other people okay. but the bartender is looking at chris pratt and he says to him uh you're not where you want to be you feel like you're supposed to be somewhere else right now and he just nods his head and he goes, yes. He goes, well, say you are wherever it is you want to be. I'm sure you're going to feel the same way you feel right now. You've, if you, It doesn't matter where you are. You're still going to feel the same way. You need to learn to accept where you are and be happy with what you have. Learn to live a little. Learn to not put that much of pressure on yourself and, you know, just... Be happy with what you have. Mm -hmm. There are good. Everybody has good things going on in their life. It's not all bad, you know. Absolutely. Just, you just got to find it. It was just a, a really Recognize powerful it. quote. Actually, I well, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna share the screen and uh, play it if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. It's it's Let's great. Do it. Okay. Let's see what <laughs> this thing's beeping. Oh, it's gonna. Be... All, right. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, hold on. I might have to unmute it. Oh crap. Oh, I'm clicking the wrong thing. Hold on. Sheesh. All right. How do I start it over? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe oh, X out. Go. Click it again. There we go. There we go. You're not where you want to be. You feel like you're supposed to be somewhere else. <laughs> you said it. Well, say you could snap your fingers and be wherever you wanted to be. I bet you'd still feel this way. Not in the right place. The point is you can't get so hung up on where you'd rather be that you forget how to make the most of where you are. What are you telling me? Take a break from worrying about what you can't control. Live a little. You're not where you mm. Right? Yeah, man. Right? 
Like that's it's it's one of my favorite quotes. It really isn't is. it weird how something like like these things are uh, seriously sound so simple, and they really are. They really are simple. They're not easy, but they're no. simple practices. It's literally a, a switch in your head. Like that's it. You didn't have to do any physical work. Now physical work can help, right? Mm -hmm. um, like working out, you know, creates endorphins. You it makes you feel yep. better, and you feel better about yourself. Um, we all have that thing. Like if you sit around on your ass for three days in a row, even if it's playing a video game, but if you don't have like interaction with like a bunch of friends or something like that, you know, playing online with people, um, if you're just kind of sitting there like, and you have this stuff in your back of your head, like, okay, I want to, you know, you know, those lists we make, yep. Yep. Um, okay. okay, today I'm going to do this. And those are like self promises. And if you don't honor those, like if you don't actually get up and do those, you're like, ah, oh, you keep procrastinating. Yep. It, it creates a kind of like anxiety and stress in you. Because really you didn't does. get up and do it. It only takes 10 minutes, bro. Get up and do it. You know, walk on the treadmill like you're doing or go outside and, I don't know, stand in the grass in your bare feet, okay? Like, do some grounding. Mm -hmm. um, that relieves a lot of stress. And then, uh, yeah, it's just like these self-promises that we break. But it's so simple. It's really just a it's switch really, in your head. It's a Focus on head. this. Yep. yep. No. Focus on the positive. Right. And that's, mm -hmm. and that's why I like that quote. And I, I – uh, I always find myself going back to that video or that, that yeah. clip of that movie. And I, I, I try to watch it at least like the movie itself at least once a year and stuff because it's a, well, it's a great movie, but that, yeah, I'm going to watch it actually. Uh, has, yeah. Has always stuck with me. And it's just, it's for me, it's good life advice to just live by, you know, like, yeah. 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 It really is. But, but no, great movie. I honestly, I, I yeah, I'm like, going to watch that tonight actually. Fully, well, uh, fully recommend I it. <laughs> I told my wife tonight, I was like, um, when I'm done tonight, um, I'm going to do some editing after this. Yeah. And then, uh, I said, but, uh, after I'm done, I want to, I want to, I want to turn something on and watch, like find a movie or something and watch. Cause now you got we've it. Been, now I got it, dude. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Well, I've been, I've been studying a lot and, and, you know, just, um, the last week and a half or so, uh, I've been immersed in some things and then, um, and so we've been exhausted at night and, you know, and so I haven't really had a night where we've done something like that in a little yeah, bit, you right? know? Well, I hope you got some popcorn you can make too. I know, right? <laughs> All I have is microwave popcorn now. It's still good, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm going to get this. Uh, I have this thing in my cart right now, bro. I'm seriously going to order this thing. My wife's going to be like, what did you buy? Yeah. Dude, you don't even know. Okay, I'm about to change our popcorn world. Yeah. <laughs> I was so I was chatting with Maddie Mo. He told me to buy this popcorn maker and uh -huh. watch this movie tonight. So <laughs> there you go. That's it. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. So yeah. dude, it's uh is this your fourth or fifth time on? This is my oh geez. Gosh, isn't fourth, that wild? What fourth fourth time let's look up coming on? I, I want to look up the um, – I'm going to pull up uh, – let's see. YouTube.com. I'm going to look up YouTube. And Matt you know on your – when you go to your own channel, you can see – you can search your uh, videos. And it's pretty quick, like in studio. This is my fourth time on. No way. What was the first one? The first one was uh, – I want to say over a year ago, Trifecta Airsoft Podcast with Mobros Airsoft. It was you and me just talking about the Mobros Airsoft team, how we got it started, yeah, uh, what we're doing, and then, <clears throat> yeah, and then it was Trifecta Airsoft podcast number sixty one. Wow! And then I was also number two twenty six, which was about six months ago. And okay, yeah, so this makes it number four. Wow, bro, yeah, that's I think crazy. I, I don't know if. I don't know if the first one had a number to it. No, see, I didn't start doing those until yeah. later. And you know, yeah, you know what I've done? So if you look at that list, you mm -hmm. can see where I stopped. Um, what I did was I went back to some of those early ones. And um, let's see where, uh, all right, let me go back to this. You started numbering them backwards or forwards? I or? started numbering them forwards. Um, but I, I, would, I was going... Uh, 
kind of backwards in the list and then I would okay. fill in this one and fill in this one like the newest one um <laughs> first or whatever and uh yeah because I I didn't you know this whole thing was spontaneous this uh podcast oh, yeah. was I didn't plan on doing a podcast but um, you know man it's it's done so many great things for the earth <laughs> You know, it, it's, I love it's brought, it, man. Brought more people together, like yeah, dude. Which I—that's what I really love. Yeah, my first, uh, my very first podcast was with uh, Zombie Zombie Thirteen. Yeah. Now on the list, um, like on my uh, Spotify and stuff, the list of my first one I think is uh, you know I didn't actually record a podcast. It was more of a um, I took the audio from. A couple of our early you know early videos yeah and then just put it into there so like the guys uh got back from a an event and i just i think i named it airsoft stories and i just took the yeah so they got back from an event and um and i just did uh i was like here let me record this what you guys are talking about hmm. and so let me look and see where um when it, I know it was have, released. I know you have zombie on here. I see yep. Q Ball, Van Alex, B Hall, yep. Gunfather Milsim. I yeah. man, I forgot you did the Gunfather Milsim interview. Really? I had him on uh, a couple times, yeah. Yeah. So um, here I'm gonna share I'm gonna share the screen real quick. And then oh I've seen a number here. Um number fifteen. And then number sixteen. Oh wow. So look at um, – can you see that? Oh, yes, I can. Yep. So look, June 17th, 2020, I did number – I named it number one Airsoft Stories, okay? Number one Airsoft Stories. And then I didn't do another – I didn't do another one until September of 2020. Airsoft Story – or uh, Stories Iron Fury 2020. <laughs> and that was the same thing. And then I, I literally took the audio – from the review videos and the giveaway mm -hmm. that we did. See, this was the review video of the um, SSP-1 and the uh, versus the SSX-23. Yep. Then June 8th of 2021. Look how spread apart these are, bro. I wasn't yeah, really. They are. Yeah. So I didn't. Uh, and then this is a combo box review, mm -hmm. uh, AAP-01 test and review. I literally just stripped the audio off and put it on here. Um, so I'm. I saw here on your YouTube channel, apparently yeah. you had admin airsoft on and then you had uh, a couple other people. And then it was task force podcast. Oh radar yeah. From moon goons. And then me and then little miss airsoft and mm -hmm. yeah, there's a whole slew. And then you had blue mag airsoft on at one point as oh, well. Yeah. yeah I had him on twice. And you had full auto on. Yeah. Yeah, I had John. And, from I, and, I, and then I see me on there again. <laughs> exactly. I, I literally scrolled like four panes and I saw my own face twice. <laughs> <laughs> it is, man. Um, yeah, it's wild to go back and look at some of these early ones. Yeah, see how I named. Um, so what it was like this long name or title, Trifecta Air. Yeah. Like I literally was typing out the whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. And then the number. Uh I um and then you just so, got to type in the number. <laughs> yeah, so what I was doing with these, I copy and pasted from uh the YouTube video that I put on. So and I I would type all this out because I had heard back in the in the day when SEO was a, a thing. I don't think it is anymore, I don't know, but um that on your YouTube titles, if you whatever keywords you want in there. Mm -hmm. then you put it in the title. So that's why I didn't abbreviate because I wanted uh, Airsoft Podcast in the title to be uh, more easily found, I guess. But um, I don't know if <laughs> – I don't think it ever worked. But um, so well, anyway. so let's, let's see right here, right? If I go over here and I type in Airsoft Podcast. Yeah. Uh, the second one that pops up is Trifecta Podcast E-Rock. Oh Apple. shit! Oh, okay, nice. What's the yep. first one? I'm curious. Uh, feedspot. dot com fifteen best airsoft podcasts you must follow. Oh okay. 
Interesting. Um, including Call Your Hits podcast, the Death yep. Row show. I know Death uh, Row. Had Gorilla him on. Airsoft Radio. I'm going to click this link. Here. Oh, yeah. Right, dude. I forgot about those guys. Matter of fact, um, they were uh, Zombie 13 and told me about those guys long before I even thought about starting a podcast. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then the Novrich podcast. Yep. Um, here's off. I'm still looking for you. You didn't make the list, bro. Oh, that's okay. Well, there's a handful. Like, there's um, what's his name? Does I've uh... heard of many of these. I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> a lot of them uh, on some of these lists I've seen. I don't think I've seen that one from Feedspot, but uh, I've seen a few of them when I was doing research on uh, how to get the listed. The Airsoft Report is the number one, and that's by RGK. And last I checked, that's not a podcast. <laughs> oh yeah, so I was gonna. That's, that's what I was gonna say. Report. Is uh, RGK? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think he started calling it a podcast, though. I, I'm pretty sure it's listed as that. Oh, did he? Oh, I, I, I didn't know that. But I, I mean, I know it's, um, it's not like. I don't. I don't know. It's more like a news kind of thing. Yeah, that, I've I've watched a couple of episodes of it. It's definitely yeah. kind of more of like a news and what's happening followed by a topic yeah you know which hey i like it i watch it you know it's cool oh yeah definitely well he puts out the um the list or not the list the uh he does like votes or um what do you call it uh, yeah he does his uh, awards thing yeah yeah the um, awards thing yeah. And it's a I, bunch of different categories. I think podcast I mean, is on there. Airsoft podcast is on there. Airsoft podcast is on there. I know, like I can't uh, be voted best, on though. Best gun release is on there. I, yeah, there's some weird yeah, like, right. qualification for airsoft podcast. It's just like consistently released once a week or something like that. That it's, I read um, I was, like uh, uh, okay. once a month. But the uh, the one that I don't qualify for is uh, that I saw on his list from last year was you have to have I don't know how many but you have to have um a podcast with no new guests or basically by yourself. I'm not sure what or whoever your crew is, you know, like your normal crew. I can't remember how it's worded. Um I just saw it. But um yeah, it was uh but that's, I so I won't I won't qualify weird. for the um RGK. Yeah, I want to qualify for this. Once once a month, you could just talk to yourself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I could if I really was, you know, concerned about getting on this, yeah, on this right. thing, but I'm, I you really, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I'm trying to see, I'm on his Instagram. Here we go. 2023. Okay, so there's a lot of there's a lot of other stuff on there too. I, I haven't glanced at it in a while, but I, there's a, stuff, a lot of stuff for product releases, best AEG release, best oh AEG, yeah, like a lot of product stuff, which I understand because I know he's sponsored by I think yeah, either Evike or Airsoft GI or, oh, or something okay. Like that. So I I think that's what he's promoting, which I'm all for, right? I just don't follow. A oh, lot me of too. Pieces and stuff. I I'm, unfortunately I just don't. I do follow yeah. event coordinators, and I did make sure I got on and. I voted for event coordinators and I voted for podcast and I threw your podcast on there. Regardless. Oh shit. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't meet. I don't, okay. So I don't it's play by the rules. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, there's only, there's only three rules for the podcast. Um, yeah. it's, uh, I'll show you real quick. It is, um, best U S based, uh, Airsoft podcast yeah. of 2023, well, one podcast per month minimum, uh, which I meet for sure. Uh, minimum of 30 minutes long episode. I think I quadruple, well, you, like yeah. quintuple that. I don't know the word, but it, I, I have very long <laughs> podcasts sometimes. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the third one is this is one I don't qualify for one episode without any special guest per month. So one I mean, per month where it's just me. Am I even considered a special guest at this point after being on for so many times? I mean, let, you let's are be special. Like, I'm you not even it. that fucking special, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, 
That's how I feel about me. I, I'm like, Patty Bowes, Patty Bowes here t- talking about popcorn and relationships, like whatever. Oh, dude, <laughs> listen now. When uh, when somebody tells me, oh, I found your podcast recently, and I've been listening to him for the past week, you know, all of them, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> because you have to hear my ugly voice every day for five days in a row. Good lord, child, I, f- I feel bad for you. That's what I said when I, I was doing a lot of video editing and stuff. They're like, oh, shit, you guys are Mo Bros Airsoft. I'm like, yeah. You're like, oh, I've been seen you guys on YouTube. And I just say, oh, I'm sorry. You probably that fat-ass heavy breathing. <laughs> oh, over that's over funny. <laughs> that's so many uh, so many YouTube videos, though, of Airsoft, uh, you know, active players. Oh. Like, you hear the this, this noise. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you hear... <sighs> <laughs> and then you'll hear that wah, 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 of the yeah. uh, AEGs. The winding of the gear. Uh-huh. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, I've, I've had uh, quite a few people recently actually kind of just reach out to me and been like, you know, Matty Lowe, what, what are you doing? How do I do this on YouTube? Or how do I do that on YouTube? And I'm just like, dude, I haven't made a video in like six months. I don't know anymore. Like, I'm, I'm kind, of, <laughs> kind of out of the game. I'm sorry. Um, I just had somebody reach out to me this week, actually asking how they can get more views on their video. And mm. they're like, I've had it posted for six hours. I've only got six views. And I'm like, Oh, wow. I'm like, dude, just put it everywhere. He goes, what do like, you mean everywhere? I'm like, dude, copy the link, right? Put it in your, in a little text to yourself, right? Yeah. Type out a text that says, Hey guys, check out my video. Yada, yada. Super cool from this event. Copy and paste all that and just spam it on every single Discord, spam it on Facebook, spam it on every single Facebook chat. Like, it's the only thing you can do. Yeah. Like, if you want to get views, you got to spam it everywhere. I know, I know, um, Ruby. Yeah. Ruby Cole, he's awesome at doing that. You, I see his content, oh, yeah. like, in a million everywhere. places, everywhere. But it's, mm-hmm. what you got, it's what you got to do to get the views, man. You got to spam yourself out there. You got to, can't yeah. be afraid to put yourself out there, put your content out there if you want to be viewed. Well, I mean, that's why, you know, on our Discord, I created that uh, check out my vids channel in there yeah, for people yeah. to do. Um, the only thing, it, yeah. Yeah, a lot of Discord. Yeah, right. That channel, right. Absolutely. And it's definitely. Yeah, like uh, put all your, uh, get, start all your socials and mm-hmm. just start promote. you know, put in that link on all your socials. And then if you have some friends, like, hey, man, can I post it on yours or I'll send it to you? Like, yeah. just have everybody, you know, Share your Just shit. repost it's it. Repost it. You know, but uh, like Instagram stories, that's a great way to get your content out there. Like, yeah. go ahead, tag a bunch of friends in your Instagram story, and if you're noticing a friend's not sharing your stuff as much as you want, well, maybe yeah. stop tagging him and tag the people that do share your stuff more often than not. You know, I'm going to give another recommendation for new airsofters that want to be content creators. Uh, start a rumble channel because youtube is uh they've been doing it for a couple years but it's 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 slowly getting you know the shadow ban thing the um you know it's it's really it's real okay uh for whatever reason we have all you know we speculated numerous times on here before but um as to why but rumble there there's a open market there you're not going to get as much traffic as youtube uh at first you're just going to have to keep but it's gaining some traction, especially now with uh, a couple of different, you know, channels that have been um, kind of going away from YouTube and going on there. You know, Russell Brand recently, uh, so Rumble's getting a lot of attention with that. Um, there is, um, there's a big podcast that uh, f- featured and fit. Um, God, I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, I watched a bunch of their live streams. And... Uh, so there's a there it's starting to gain some traction and we had one a rumble channel in there i think look there's an open market on rumble for airsoft because if you type in airsoft podcast on rumble we're the only ones <laughs> if you type in airsoft uh we're one of the only ones there there's a a channel called replicare that is um air guns not airsoft like so uh, I think on a rumble we have. It's this whole. Uh... Oh wow! Now listen, this is a pretty sad statement. Okay, 
we have if as far if you type in airsoft and look at all the different channels listed at top at the mm -hmm. top we have the most followers you do at, look at and it it's right only here. 200 and something Damn. <laughs> isn't that crazy Damn. and that so there's a wide open market on there that um mm -hmm. you know you could start gaining some traction on there and you won't have to worry about your stuff being censored at all okay so and that's that's what everybody's running into. I mean, absolutely. Mobra, the Mobro's Airsoft Instagram page, shadow banned. Uh -huh. can't, nobody can find us. Nobody can see your nope. stuff. Like we can't, we can't advertise to new people. So we don't yeah. post on there that much anymore. And all I've done is just submit for review. And I get the answer back a day later. We've reviewed your page. Okay, <laughs> answer you can do something about it like, oh my god you can make our shit viewable again nope i could just go ahead and submit review button again and again and again oh, god. i've i've edited all of our posts to make sure that they say um this is an airsoft replica not a real gun no. um doesn't matter no they just anything that's related to firearms they just want to shadow ban so well this is okay so Maybe is if hopefully somebody out there will know, be you know the real answer because what I'm the the thing I'm very confused about is there's a handful of channels that I started purposely following on Instagram or pages I guess that were uh, you know obviously gun related some of them I like some of them I I just only followed to tr to do a test mm -hmm. to see what they were allowed to post and there's one called um, is it hell I think it's called uh, hell and back again. Okay, it's a military-based uh, page, and they are literally showing – they're allowed to show people in Ukraine and Russia fighting in a war getting killed, getting shot in the head, getting uh, bombs what dropped on them from – you know, grenades dropped on them from drones, and people's and body parts flying off. I'm not shitting, bro. Like, legit, and real war footage. And meanwhile, the Mobro's Airsoft team has a picture of all the guys holding their flag with no guns in it, and that is against uh, That's what I'm saying. What the, I think – It's a bias. It's a bias. So like what, I, what I'm thinking is – this is what I was telling people a few months ago is what you need to start doing on your posts, you know, with Airsofters, instead of saying, hey, look, it's not real guns, is say, hey, real guns. I don't know what – you know, because yeah. obviously that works. <laughs> so like – Seriously. It's so weird, bro. Like it's, I'm it's, seeing, it, it's strange. It's a, it's a Zuckerberg biasm. Bias I guess. Or whatever. But bro, so the the question is, is the question I have, and I've always had is, and this is what we speculate on is why airsoft paintballers all day, bro. They can post and post and post real why guns airsoft? and real war footage all day. I saw a video. On I Instagram. have a theory on this. I have. A I do too, but I don't know. I saw a video last, uh, like two weeks ago. This guy was filming in New York City, and the, mm -hmm. the video must have been uh, maybe in summertime or something because it looked, you know. But um, a lady was run over by a bus, a city bus, uh, off of her bicycle, and was dragged part of her body. Oh the guts. God. The all the guts were dragged or strewn out for probably fifty feet. Her body was still partial part of her body was still stuck under the dual wheels in the back, and the and I mean guts squirted out the side like it was. The guy was like, "Oh my god!" Now they're allowed to post this kind of stuff on Instagram, and we can't post a picture of an airsoft gun. I just I what's your theory? I, what's your theory? So, um. My theory about the airsoft guns, yeah, and why Instagram would be so against it, and why they say it's right. against community standards, because all, all they're writing their jargon and stuff about, oh, we don't promote firearms and stuff on our page, yeah. but yet, yet they do. Like there are other right. people that promote it. Um, most of those people are meta verified because they're paying for the meta verified service, so maybe that's why they get okay. away with it. Okay. But I think I think that many airsofters, especially ones that are over a thousand followers. Um, that gain traction. I want to say it's because of kids. A lot of kids are into airsoft. A lot of younger, under, you know, 16 year old kids, yeah. 12 year old, 11 year old, what have you. And they'll see airsoft and they'll see that as something that they want to do. And then they'll toy around with firearms, maybe hurt themselves. Maybe that's Instagram's mm. like 
theory behind it. Yeah. It's the it's the only thing that I personally can think of that's just yeah. like, why would you not want this content on your platform? Oh, mm-hmm. because kids can see it. But if if that's the case, like just go ahead and say it's for adults only or something. Like I, I don't know. Like Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, see, that's my theory. That's exactly yeah. my theory, is that um they see that the younger generation uh is attracted to airsoft mm-hmm. and um and they don't maybe they don't want that because of um what like what you said or you know the safety thing or maybe it's because they yeah. don't they want to kind of steer people away from the gun you know quote unquote it's, gun community it's the only thing like the yeah. only the only bias that i can yeah. think of Same. that would make any sort of sense that's what i, I came mean, up with yeah so i i I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll hop on the Mobros page and start promoting hormone blockers or something like that. Get back on the good graces or something, you know? <laughs> oh, please don't! Let, oh no! <laughs> oh God! I know, right? Oh, yeah. Geez. Start posting a mix in there. Start mixing in yeah. there. Nerf guns. Nerf guns are real colorful and <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know if those get banned or not, man. I'd be crazy if they do. Jeez. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, all this, this this right here, this is just yeah. all red flag. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, well, Lord. So I, crazy. I, I rent uh, the house that I live in. I rent this basement. Yeah. I'm in. I rent it. Uh, once a year, maintenance has to come through, do an inspection of the property. Literally just walk through every room. If okay. they, see something, they see something odd, they take a picture of it. They're like, right. oh, you caused damage to this or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so every year, uh, sometimes we get a new maintenance person. He comes down. He has to walk through this basement. Yep. He sees all the gun, guns on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Shits himself. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, that's funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but you could – it's okay. You can take a picture yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's fine. Nothing's going to happen. Shouldn't these be locked up in a, in a safe? And like, no. <laughs> no, because they need, uh, no, they need one good. of these to work. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah, we have a, you know, it's this, well, I've shown it before on the pegboard up here behind the camera is, you know, yeah, yeah. full of, you know, airsoft guns, it's about half and half, real guns and airsoft mm-hmm. guns. And um, when my wife has a bunch of girlfriends over for like um, those makeup parties or whatever, kind of, you know, baby showers or whatever. Oh, yeah. You, and the you girls. Look, you look good in some makeup, B Rock. For yeah, sure. I should put some on. I think I'm going to put some on for uh, for Halloween. Yeah. Really? No. Really? No. Good. You, <laughs> no. you, you look great. You know, nice little blonde wig on or something, you know? <laughs> oh, I know, right? You know, what I was thinking about doing is doing a mohawk, okay? Oh. Like a, a nice big go. spiky mohawk wig. Oh, and, yeah. Um, that'd be cool. <laughs> Spray paint it like red, <laughs> blue and red. And, and, then, and then do a live. <laughs> Seriously, do a do a Halloween live. Screw it. We're doing a um. We're going to a uh, Halloween party. My daughter and son in law are having a Halloween party. They only live like Ooh. ten minutes away, and great. they had a big one last year. And the year before that, we had it here. They hosted it, but we had it here, mm-hmm. and there was probably fifty people here. There was people. Holy crap, dude! We were doing beer pong. We were. Do- it was pretty crazy, man. Like one uh one of the guys brought a fog machine, Ooh. so the whole house was foggy. Uh. Throughout the and, and it was like uh, it leaves like a wet residue on the hardwood floor. So people, I was like, "Hey, be careful now. Walk yeah. slow because it was a little slippery." Mm-hmm. But um, there were people passed out on the couch until like, oh yeah, at three in the morning. It was uh, it was pretty crazy. So everyone had a really good time and everyone oh, dressed man. up. I did I did a real basic thing. I just uh, took black paint and red paint and smeared it on my face like a you know a zombie or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. I ripped up an old T-shirt and. Made it look like I was a zombie. I didn't. I don't put a lot into a costume. And, me neither. Uh, <laughs> me neither. I, I haven't done like a Halloween party since I was in college. But when I was yeah. when I was in college, Halloween was a lot of fun. Mainly because where I lived in Boston, yeah, uh, I was right on the edge of like the apartment area and like the dorm room area for all the colleges. So people would pass my house to go to all the parties up on the hill. Nice. And then they pass my, how the, all the girls would pass my house in the morning to go back to their dorm room. Oh yeah. So, anyway, so Halloween, tons of fun. 
the morning after Halloween was even more fun because you get to watch the Walk of Shame. And oh my god, <laughs> that's awesome! Uh, oh look, Slutty Nurse, Slutty Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> their makeup's all like smeared down here, and their well, their costumes halfway hanging and. We're still drunk in the apartment at freaking you know six uh-huh. seven in the morning. We we didn't stop all night. We were waiting up for oh, this yeah. part of the night. So oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh man, Hell yeah, man. No, oh, that was yeah, that was the most fun. I haven't done a Halloween party though in freaking years. I just I just have no idea of what to dress up as. To be honest, with we you. did. Um, let's see, we did. You know, we we would do them because, like, when the kids were growing up and stuff, we'd do them and have their friends over, and they weren't wild like this one a couple years ago. But they, you know, we'd have movies on for them. They would do the thing. We'd have games out for them, and uh, when you know when they're teenagers or whatever. So, uh, and of course, pizza and f- mm-hmm. all kind of food and sodas and stuff. But they uh, and they they loved it, you know, and then. Then we started doing some with um, <laughs> some people from work and, you know, like having adults over as well. And then as my, as our kids got older, like in their early 20s, then they're then they're like, hey, well, let's do the beer pong, you know? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, it's yeah, funny, it's pretty. It's funny you mentioned the beer pong. Uh, so this past weekend, as you know, like I, I dropped my wife off for her cruise and whatever. Yeah. Right? And I drove back. I drove back to New Hampshire, let the dog out. And I got the house ready, and I had all the Mobros team over for a party. Nice Saturday night, first yeah. night. Yeah, um, we did this party last year as well mm-hmm. when my wife was out in town for a weekend, and we call it now uh, the Mobros Twenty One Plus Night. Nice. And we go out, we hit a couple of the bars, then we come back to my place. This year we got beer pong going, Halo tournaments. Oh uh, shit! A couple of guys were using the hot tub, like. We were, nice. All of us were up until about four in the morning. <laughs> oh my god, that's awesome! Oh no, we, it was it got wild. It was crazy, but it's it's a great bonding experience for the team, you know. Oh, like, it is. Gonna, it is. Come over and just like, hey, just tell your wife that you have some sort of airsoft event, <laughs> there, but you know, you're you're gonna be crashing at a, a hotel, or just just come over and we're just gonna drink and just have fun. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but no, it was absolute blast. We. uh Went through a lot of whiskey. <laughs> oh, the yeah. Mo- the Mobros team likes its fucking whiskey. I, I will not lie. <laughs> <Holy crap. laughs> yeah, man. But no, definitely, definitely a good night. And then we all got up at around 10 in the morning, 10 in the morning, ordered some breakfast from the diner. And then everybody was gone around like two o'clock in the afternoon, I think. It took everybody that long to get up and mm-hmm. you know, have some ibuprofen, drink yes. a lot of water. <laughs> yeah, man. Woof. Definitely. Well, you get you've been playing a lot of airsoft too, man. Like, uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's coming up to the last quarter of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, what uh, or we're in the last quarter of the year. What? Uh, so looking back over this Oof. year, what what have you guys? Uh, what? How many events have you gone to? What's the most memorable one, or oh, the man. most memorable thing that's happened uh, uh, on airsoft? So we've been to a few events, and one of the things I love that's happening with the team now is um, years past, like go back to years past on the podcast, I myself had to pretty much go with the team to every single event. And one of the things that changed this year was uh, there was a lot of events the team attended without me even being there, without me even going as like a team leader, if you will, Um, because the team captains are picking up that responsibility and they're taking other members of the team with them to go to all these events. So uh, we did Operation Outbreak earlier this year. We mm-hmm. did Gangs of New York. We did, um, I think, our Coupe de Gras, or our, our best event this year was Arclight with Premier Tactical. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm sure Ghost talked to you about it, and I'm sure yep. that um, Hazard from yep. Valkyrie Derek did Valkyrie. probably talk. Right? I mean, that... Arclight was a really fun event. I got to be a platoon sergeant for that event. Yeah. Um, me and one of my good friends, uh, Rick Lane, Reaper Six from Dogs of War, um, who I've been telling him to get oh. on and chat with you. And you told I, him again tonight on the live. I saw that right before you and I started. I did. I said, Reaper, okay. you got to get on and talk with fucking E-Rock. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get him on here, bro. 
Reaper Six, great guy. Uh, he's got two kids. Expecting a third coming along shortly. Congratulations to you, Reaper. But uh, hopefully, it doesn't take away too much of his time for Airsoft. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, for real. But um, right, Reaper Six, yeah, yeah, I've been following him for a while. Okay, I'm gonna oh, reach yeah. out to him. Definitely reach out to him, dude. He's mm -hmm. uh, one of, one of the greatest guys. He's been airsofting <laughs> just as long as I have, if not longer. Um, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. He's been doing right. it. I think he did it, I think maybe like 12 years ago, stopped for a little bit and then picked it back up again. But, uh, he's also, he's also national guard, okay. uh, military okay. service member himself. And, uh, I think he's, I think he's almost out. I'm not sure if he's, gotcha. still serving now, but, um, but yeah, he was running as platoon leader at Arclight. Uh, I ran as his platoon sergeant, if you will. And, yep. Together, the two of us, we just we just had a great yin and yang at that event. Yeah, you know, oh, that's if, good. If if he's dealing with something with command, he knew that I was dealing with the squad leaders and making sure that any questions that they had were being answered and so on and so forth. Right. Right. Um, I think most of that event, I myself, I spent on this right here, and I don't mean like <laughs> scrolling Facebook no, and stuff. You're the, I was. Uh... App, I was on right? the, I was on the maps. I was on the applications. Yeah. I was, you know, coordinating on the radios and stuff like that. And while I was doing all that command coordination, I'd bring all that information back to Reaper Six, and he would help move that around with the guys out on the field and get people where they needed to be. And it was it was a great yin and yang that we had. Yeah. That. And him and I have talked since then, and we're just we're really looking forward to the next event where we can get forty to fifty people to command yeah. under us so that way we can do that again it was just an absolute blast um we've also talked that it would be a lot of fun if we both went to an event together you know his team my team and we both swapped squad leader roles so i would run his uh, team as squad leader he would run my team as squad leader we thought that'd be right. a really <laughs> real fun thing either that or Maybe go to an event where we're both COs and we can fight each other, but have our teams swap. So that mm -hmm. way, <laughs> the Mobros would love to get a couple of hits on me. I'm sure the, <laughs> the Dogs of War would love to get a couple of hits on him. So uh -huh. uh, that'd be fun too. But, oh, that's uh, cool. That's a no, good Rick's, idea. No, Rick's an absolute great guy. And uh, yeah, Arclight, nice. was, Arclight was a blast of an event. It really was. A lot of night portion gameplay. Um had some cool moments myself. Uh, I got to drive the technical, which was really cool. I've never done oh, wow. that before. Um, was it a it, Hummer or a Humvee? No, no, it was just it was just a pickup truck. Honestly, okay, okay, yeah, just yeah. a pickup truck, and then people would get on the back of it with their yep. LMGs. But uh, it was Sunday, which was day two of the event. We were defending the Forge area, which is our main base, and we also had a small contingent over at. Uh, uh, I think it was like the research center, ISO one one five or or something like that, and you could see clear across this field. You see the large tree lines and skirmish paintball, and I'm. I got our entire platoon. We're all situated in the forge. We're in defensive positions. We even have a squad further out in front of the forge, looking at the tree line. And then we have the rest of our entire faction in ISO 115, and they're conducting research to be able to score an objective, objective Hades. I, I'm not sure what they were doing. All I cared about was, <laughs> hey, we're, we're defending this. That's all that matters. Right. We have, we have the technical, and I'm literally just sitting in the driver's seat of the technical, mm -hmm. and I just I pull out a granola bar, and I'm like, oh, I haven't eaten all morning. Fucking eat this granola bar. All right. I start munching down. And the radio goes off right here at my head. It goes, holy shit, ISO's getting hit. They're coming out of the tree line. ISO's getting hit. So I do one of these. Because <laughs> you can see the whole tree line, right? Yeah. I do one of these. And there's about like 40 to 50 guys sprinting out of the tree line headed towards ISO, which is just on the other side of the field. You can clearly see it clear as day. Yeah. And the guys are on the radio. They're like, Hey, uh, this is squad two to command. Like, what do you want us to do? Should we go ahead and push up on that ship? What are we doing? What are we doing? Hold now. Hold now. ISO needs to defend themselves. We can't abandon our position because then we'll lose both positions. Like, we're going to hold still. And then next thing you know, I, I look over to my left 
And I see our CEO, Commander Connolly, Doc Connolly, Rabbit's brother from Grimnir Tactical, mm -hmm. sprinting down the stairs. He runs. He jumps on the back of the technical. He's just, Maddie, let's fucking go. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, startled. I I drop my granola bar, and I put the key in, and I put it in drive. <laughs> I start going, I'm like, no. Why so hungry? <laughs> I start start driving this thing i'm going five miles an hour he uh -huh. slaps the wood and he goes fucking pick it up let's go and i'm like oh, all right let's we're going <laughs> oh my god all the way through i got i got footage of me uh rolling down the window sticking my gun out the side oh shit popping a couple rounds while doc's on the back of the uh on the back of the trunk of the technical with my lmg uh this this one up here just Gunning guys down left yeah. and right. I mean, it was it was awesome. It was a lot of fun, dude. That and, sounds uh, awesome. It's not even my technical. It belonged to uh, another squad, another team, if you will. Uh, Tombstone Operation Group is their name, and uh, I just happened to be sitting in it. He told me to go. I, I just went. He <laughs> runs into me on the field. He goes, "Hey, is everything okay?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, no, truck's running fine." He goes. Do you want me to take over? I'm like, if you want to take over, it's your truck. I don't I'll do whatever you want. He goes, no, right. no, you keep, you keep driving it. Just make sure you get it back. And go. I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, oh, that's cool, man. It was no, it was a, it was a very cool, very fun experience. And uh, that that event in entirety, there was, like I said before, there was so much great communication between myself, Reaper Six, and Command, and I think that's yeah. what won our faction that event. And that's a huge plus, man. It's, it's like communication. I, I've said it before. It's on everything, podcast, bro. With you, it's it literally is. It's what wins these events. Right? It really so, is. Not just winning, it. but it's uh, it's what makes the whole team have more fun during the event. Oh, oh for because sure. confusion, confusion halts everything. And this is in yep. just in general in life, like in manufacturing, in an office mm -hmm. setting, in a whatever, like. When you've got a team in a team setting, no matter what it is, confusion halts everything. And then people start getting pissed and resentful. And then they start pointing a finger at each other. And then the whole yep. thing falls apart. Oh, um, yeah. For sure. Yeah. For communication sure. is paramount. And and that's and that's one of the things I noticed, like, especially that, that Sunday at the event. Yeah. Like, we had everybody in the defensive position. And we were waiting for about – you know, I want to say about two to three hours. We were just waiting. We had a squad out there at the dunes in no shade whatsoever. They're just laying on Oof. a couple of sand dunes out there. Yeah. And they're baking alive. Right. Oh, sure. They, they've been out there for 30 minutes. I stood out there for, you know, just stood out in the middle of the forge area for 30 minutes. I'm like, this is fucking hot. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to grab some waters and run them out to those boys. That's what I did. I grabbed, we had a package nice. of waters there. I grabbed it. I walked around the whole facility, got in contact with all five squads that we had. And I'm just like, who needs a water bottle? Drink the water bottle. Right? Like every mm. single person. Went all the way out to the, the dunes. And as I was going out to the dunes, their squad leader calls in on the radio and goes, uh, you know, squad two to command. Can we get somebody out here to bring us some water? Oh, shit. Matty bo has got it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hell yeah. But it was it – was, that sort of communication, keeping everybody's morale up and stuff that I was responsible for. And I, I think everybody had such a great time. It was also, um, it was also the first time that our discord group was able to coordinate such a mass attendance to an event. Um, oh, wow. I don't think I've told you, but uh, I want to say maybe like this year, maybe last year, mm -hmm. we started this uh, discord group called East coast Alliance airsoft okay and what the discord group is is it's a place for team leaders and team members of all sorts of individual teams to join that discord and literally just post in there hey i'm going to this event who else is going yeah you just put it out there me and my team are going to this event we have three people is there anybody we can team up with well the biggest problem with teams attending airsoft events is every team wants to go but no team is able to get 12 people to go to an event. It's just impossible. It, it, it's just, yeah. there are some teams that can do it, which is great. But for the most part, a, a lot of these teams that sign up for events, they can only get maybe three people to go, four mm -hmm. people to go, six people to go. Squads are 12 or more, right? 
the reason we created the East Coast Alliance is so that way you could go on there. You can say, hey, we're going to we're going to GTI to Iron Dagger and we have three people. We're signed up for this faction. Yep. Does anybody want to team up with us? Hey, Mobros Airsoft here. We're going to Iron Dagger. We got four members. We would love to team up with you. Right. Hey, Hogs of War here. We got three members. Let's go ahead and make this 10, boys. Let's keep yep. it going. Get a whole East Coast Alliance group of people together. You can all run your own faction patches. That's great. Yeah, right. But you're with a good group of friends that you know that you communicate with before, mm-hmm. during, and after the event and coordinate even more attendance to other places. And yeah. At the Arclight event, um, myself and Reaper Six, we did such a great do- job coordinating all these other teams. We had 40 attendees for our platoon. Whoa. All from that Discord. Damn, all from, bro. All, all from teams and everything. And that's, we had five different squads, and it was two technicals showed up to fight for our platoon. Under oh, the that's East Coast awesome. Alliance banner. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. Just, just that awesome. That is crazy. And we're looking to do that with more events coming up. We have a, right. a one a one day M Sato event coming up in November. And I think we already got maybe about like 18, 20 people from the Alliance that are like, yeah, okay. oh, I want to come on play on this team with all the other guys from the East Coast Alliance Discord. Let's do it. Like, right. It's just a great way for the community to connect. And it's even good for individual players as well. Players mm-hmm. that aren't on a team, but they want to go to an event. Oh, but I'm not going to know anybody there. Hop in the East Coast Alliance Discord. Just yep. hop in it. Say hi to a couple of people. Ask if anybody else is going. Somebody will answer you. Somebody. Yeah, you'll have to. Uh, I'll need to post that link um, for sure. There's actually, there's actually a whole. Uh, we made a. What's it called? We made an Instagram page for it as well. East okay. Coast Alliance. Uh, I think it's East Coast Alliance Airsoft. I think it's called. Check uh, it. Let me see here. Uh, yeah, East Coast Alliance Airsoft. Here, I'll. Yep. Uh, I'm already on it, bro. Follow right already, now. I'm number fifty six. Hell yo. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> all right, so yep, here's your Discord link right here. Yep, and basically the 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 Instagram channel, all it does is pretty much if uh any link to the Discord team. Yeah. Oh yeah, link to the Discord and any team and stuff. They'll share their stories and whatnot, share their posts and stuff onto their story. Okay. But um, the Discord itself, we uh, we have quite a few teams listed in there. Um, let's see, uh, six MG, Knights of Combined Arms, Airsoft Anonymous, Blunt Force Airsoft New Hampshire, Dogs of War, Genesis, Green Beans, Grown Man Toy Guns, Irops, Mobros, Moon Goons. Uh, New England Rangers, Skullfuckers, Task Force Diamond, Valkyrie Directive, <laughs> Tombstone, and Voodoo Group. And I think there's even more being added as we speak. Yeah, I just um, added right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just joined right now. Yeah, there, buddy. I just paid for you. <laughs> well, hello there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we have a whole section of the Discord there. Who's going? That's people impressive, though, dude. Yeah. Like, for real. Like, um, what'd you say? 40, you know? 40 people. We had 40 Bro. people all just from this Discord. Yes. Some people some people weren't even in the Discord. They were just members of the team leaders that were in the Discord. Mm-hmm. And that's the most important part. We want those team leaders in there because, hey, you, you guys are the ones that are running your team. Like, if you're going to an event and you, you're like, oh, yeah, well, I have six people on my team that are coming. Oh, well, now I have five people. Now I have four people. Like, it doesn't matter. You're still going. Exactly. Like that. Don't worry about it. The rest yeah. of the East Coast Alliance is going to have your back. Po- You're not post gonna- it on this Discord and you'll be, you know, somebody will join yeah. up. Yeah. Or you can join somebody. Yeah. It, exactly. Somebody will join up or you can join. <laughs> so, somebody. what's the ideal um, team size? Like, if you guys wanted to uh, split off, like, uh, like let's say, uh, okay, you, you guys only have four. Uh, these guys only have eight. Is twelve to twenty? Is that a good size, or do you want forty all on one team? Uh, so, how do you guys work that out? Forty was uh, the forty players that we had attend ArcLight was definitely a. <laughs> it's a lot. It was a lot. Well, it's a lot right? to manage, like uh, comms. I'm thinking about comms. So, so what you we have to did split it was up. 
what we did was uh, myself and Reaper Six have been attending uh, Grimier Tactical events for a while. Yeah. I myself have done the platoon leader role. He's done the platoon leader role in the past. Mm-hmm. So when we decided that we wanted to go with like an East Coast Alliance thing, we were telling people, hey, you want to come fight for the East Coast Alliance? Um, make sure that you put underneath your team affiliation East Coast Alliance or ECA, mm-hmm. right? So what that does is it allows the event coordinator themselves, instead of having to be like, oh, well, Bobros are playing with Dogs of War, who's playing with Valkyrie, right? Instead of having yeah. the, the event coordinator is not going to remember that, right? No. And they're going to be the ones who make the roster. Mm-hmm. If you have everybody just put ECA, East Coast Alliance, uh, or something okay. like that, like just register as that. It's way, way you, easier. You are – you are guaranteed to be in the platoon or the squad or something mm-hmm. like that under ECA, right? Okay. They're not event coordinators don't want to split you up. The other thing is no. if event coordinators see that fifty people signed up as ECA, uh light bulb's gonna go off and say, Okay, who the fuck are these guys? Yep. Um let me get let me get onto social media right now to figure out who the hell ECA is, because mm-hmm. they got fifty players that just signed up for event. Then, of course, you know, um, we had myself or Reaper Six reach out to Grimnir. We're like, hey, listen, yes, we have 40 ECA guys. We know what teams these people are in. We yep. know what squads they want to go to. They gave us a platoon leader role, and we just figured it out ourselves. Right, right. And then we showed up. We showed up to play. Like I said, me and Reaper were great yin and yang on the platoon leader side. And – the teams that wanted to run themselves, hey, we just want to run a five-man unit. Right. You got it. You're going to run a five-man unit. Mm-hmm. All right. You got these two teams that are paired together. They're a 12-man unit. You know, we got yeah. these guys over here that are, you know, an eight-person unit. Like, just broke it up however we seem fit, you know? Yeah. And just now, what do you do it. with uh, – do you, do you make sure that uh, each each little team, like fire team or whatever, you know – um, is going to have like the main whoever's in charge, like the fire team leader or something's going to have, uh, is going to be on comms so you guys can help That's direct. That's exactly what we did. So, objectives. Okay. Um, me and Reaper Six, we both ran two radios. Yep. And we ran our platoon channel and we ran the command channel. Gotcha. And we kind of had to do that because if we tried to run individual squad frequencies, we would just be on the radio all day just. Just typing with a piece of paper in our hand. It's not fun. Yeah. So run two radios. One radio dedicated to the command net. We could talk to our CO. He could mm-hmm. talk to us. And us two were the only two on there. The other, the platoon channel, we only allowed squad leaders on. And we were very strict about this with our squad leaders because some of them have never squad leaded before. Some of them mm. have done it before, but they prefer to have a RTO on their squad. Gotcha. Hit. We tell people straight out, right, do not have an RTO. Mm. Don't do it. Because I – I'm sure he's a great guy, but I'm not trying to talk to the RTO. I'm trying no. to talk to you. Like, exactly. You, your RTO isn't the squad leader. Mm-hmm. You're the squad leader. Well, you don't want uh, miscommunication either, man. Like the telephone exactly. game, like, dude, come on, mm-hmm. you know. And, and then you know, there's not always, uh, in, especially when shit's hitting the fan. There's not always very yeah. clear. Yeah. There are clearly spoken uh, directives when you're over the radio. It can be a little garbled, you know, depending on what's going on, what's in your ear. Like, I who mean, knows? You're, you're in the middle of a firefight. You're returning fire, and your RTO yells at you. Background noise. Hey, command Command says that they want us to pull back. What? Command says he wants us to pull back. No, fuck that. Why would we do that? I, I'm just relaying the orders, dude. Like, it, yep. that little thing happens. That's time wasted. It's so much that. time wasted. No. Just, let me, as the platoon leader, talk to my squad leader, please. Yes. If you want an RTO, use the RTO to relay orders to your squad. Yep. Use it in that essence, all right? But I want a radio that goes directly to you. Absolutely. End of story. So that, yeah. And that's what we did. It worked awesome. You know, mm-hmm. we were able to get a hold of all of our squad leaders. Um, we knew where they were at all times. We knew where our technicals were at all times, too. Which was oh, awesome. that's good. You know, um, that – Paid, played a big role Friday night um, trying to defend Meghara, which is the name of the village we were trying to defend. Oh, okay. And I think Ghost told you a little bit of that story. He said I had a grenade throw through a window. Oh, that's – yeah, dude. Yeah. For real. I yeah, forgot about I, that. <laughs> I, I don't know how I did that to be honest with you. Right? I suck at baseball. 
but uh, <laughs> I mean, some somebody up above was looking out for me. I guess. There you go, man. He, there he you go. Landed that throw, but um, no, it was Friday night at that event was uh, stressful. Um, it was okay. myself and I think it was Kraken Actual, which was uh, our commander of our. Not of our platoon, but like of uh, one of, part of our faction. Okay. Um, him and I were in the second story of a building. The only entrance to it was a staircase on the outside facing mm. the rear of the town. Gotcha. Um, then we had, you know, we had friendly combatants, you know, down on the first floor, but they'd have to walk outside of cover to go upstairs to the second floor to get us. But we were up on the second floor, vantage point. We could see more. Uh, we could see kind of the tree line and where a lot of our guys were placed. Uh, I was up there with him because he was communicating directly with our CO. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly where I wanted to be. So if I heard something from my, you know, platoon net, I can relay to him because he's standing right next to me. Mm -hmm. And the two, the two of us were just up there on our radios, on our phones, plotting enemy positions in the dark. (laughs) Like that's, that's what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Reaper 6 was on the ground, moving from squad to squad to squad, checking on every single one of our squad leaders, all of our guys, making sure that they're properly spread out to defend this town. Wow. And he he did that job awesome. Our squad leaders did their job awesome. Like, it it worked. The only reason we lost the town at one point, they pushed in, is because a small unit – of CFI enemy forces flanked all the way around the town and we didn't have anybody watching our six and they shot a tagging round in through the second story window where myself and commander Wes were sitting Holy and, they, cow. and they blew us, they blew us up. Wow. So literally your entire like communications force dead. Oh shit. And that's when the L- enemy LMGs opened up. <laughs> oh no! I want to say what saved us in this essence was the communication from Reaper Six and our other squad leaders. Mm. Because, like I said, I was constantly on the radio talking to Reaper Six, talking to the other squad leaders, and then literally talking to Command, who's standing right next to me. Hey, this mm-hmm. is what's going on. We have friendlies in this area. We have friendlies to your left, to your right. Like I can see where people are on the map. It's when the gunfire started happening and people started calling me on the radio or calling for command on the radio and being like, oh, shit, Maddie's hit. Shit, Matt, fuck, Maddie's hit. We got to fucking do something. We got to fucking, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> oh, that's like, funny. I, all I could do is sit there and just listen to these guys on the radio and they're just like, all right, shit, where is he? We need to get bodies up there. We can't. It's under heavy machine gun fire. We got to get oh those machine God. guns out. Like, they communicated against – amongst themselves mm-hmm. and after about 10 minutes they were able to get some bodies up to the second story and revive not only myself but also wes and it was at that point once we were revived that they lost the building across i guess you can call it a street across the street from us yeah and that's where ghost was telling his story about how he was on the bottom floor he knew that i was revived on the first floor and everybody was talking there's enemies in that door enemies in that window I had four grenades on me. I just yeah. chucked them all. <laughs> I just chucked them all <laughs> at that building. And apparently one of them landed in a window and wiped everybody out. I had no clue. Oh, like, that's awesome. <laughs> I just, I just, I got revived. I got up. I threw grenade after grenade. And then I sat down, went on my phone and started getting on comms and started calling in for backup, started uh-huh. marking enemy positions. I'm like, all right, I did my thing. I threw my pyro. You guys downstairs need to recapture that point. And that's what they did. Like it just, that's awesome. Again, communication is what won out, you know? Sure. And it was when everybody realized that, holy crap, that communi- that constant communication from command has stopped. Something's wrong here. Yep. We, we need to get that line back up, and then we can go ahead and move out and, you know, win. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. That sounds Epic. amazing. A lot of people that go to play these airsoft games and stuff, they'll have they have the stories like Ghost did. It's just like, so right. I was the guy who had to run across, like in open fire, like you're getting shot at and stuff. Like the way that I play airsoft or the way that my stories and stuff go is, yeah, those guys are doing all that like really cool, intense like gunfire shit. 
Yeah. I'm all the way up here, like out of body experience watching you do that. <laughs> yeah. Because so my game well, yeah, my game that I play is it, it's on the map. Yeah. My the, the game I'm playing is the massive chess game. That's that's what that's, I like to play. Absolutely. That's what I like to do. And it's a crucial part, you know? Oh, it's yeah, it really is. You have to have it. If you want to win, you gotta have it. And there's a there's a few teams that uh that do it really well, like um that I've talked with. Obviously you guys uh and then uh the tryhards um you know they're oh, yeah. always a, a big presence yeah yeah no last i used to be a new hampshire airsofter i actually i actually know him yeah. um him and i played together at local fields and stuff up here before he moved down to florida uh-huh yeah. i know i was really surprised to hear that when uh when i yeah. talked to talk to him yeah that's cool yeah but uh no it's just yeah, one of those things, communication, man. It's uh yeah, plays dude. A, a bigger role than a lot of people a lot of people think. Now are you guys um are you guys doing uh any other big events before the end of the year? do you have something in November? Uh yes. So we got a M Sato event. It's a one day Milsom event down in Rhode Island at Warzone Paintball and Airsoft. Okay. Um we never played an M Sato event before, but uh we're gonna go give it a hmm. try and uh just go have fun with it. It was kind of disheartening. Um, we had two events, bigger events, on our schedule for the end of this year. Yeah. Uh, both at Zulu 24, and they were both canceled. That's what I heard. Yeah, that's what Ghost was saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had uh, we had Operation Blood Diamond, which is supposed to be this weekend, uh, canceled. And then Anthropos with Grimier Tactical was canceled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have an idea why Anthropos was canceled. It's still disheartening, you know? Um, yeah. Similar to what we did at Arclight with, like, the 40 players and stuff coming out. Uh -huh. We we were, after Arclight, we started actively planning to do something similar at Anthropos. Oh, yeah. And the numbers were already reaching, like, 60. <laughs> yeah. Like, if not oh, more, wow. for, like, to get that many people out. And then they released that they're going to cancel the event. So everyone's just like, oh, oh like, man. Like, so we're, that that East Coast Alliance buildup of like <laughs> getting these mass amount it of worked. people coordinated to go to an event before it even starts. Like it, yeah. it's working. People loved it so much. They were ready yeah. to do it again. And then just, sorry, okay. guys, it's canceled. So uh, we have plans to do more of that next year at a couple of different events. We got a couple coming up in April of 2024. But as far as the Moat Bros team ending out the year, we have a couple holiday themed events coming up. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to be doing a zombie night game skirmish Halloween weekend, which should be nice. a lot of fun. Uh, Six o'clock to midnight at UBG Airsoft in Bridgewater, Mass. It's uh, pistols and shotguns only. Oh, shit. Okay. Which is, I mean, if, if anybody's ever played that type of game mode, it's, it's a lot of fun. No HPA pistols, too. So, like, gotcha. none of this green soft stuff, like, you have to run, like, just regular old with, green With guns. regular magazines, no uh, drum mags and tap. Yeah, no and all that drum shit, mag, right. nothing like that. That yeah, and yeah. just a standard shotgun. I think they'll allow bolt action snipers, but that's about it. Like, that's okay. That and it's zombies in the middle of the night from six o'clock at night until midnight. It's going to be pitch Ooh. black and dark out there. Like, yeah, it's going to be, uh, that's going to be cool, fun. man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we got that game going on. Uh, then, of course, I, I talked about the MSATO event. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, really know what to expect from that event. I know it's a Milsim event. Yeah. And so we're going there with the Milsim mindset. You know, we got our squad together and uh, we're linking up with a couple of other players and teams from the ECA team that wanted to come out and okay. do that. So that'll be a fun time. Uh, other than that, we have, uh, we have Thanksgiving weekend. There's a local skirmish in New Hampshire that we'll be attending. Um, it's Christmas themed on Thanksgiving nice. weekend because it's right after Thanksgiving, right? But yeah. it's, uh, there's going to be Krampus roaming the field trying to steal presents <laughs> that are objectives, right? Uh, Krampus also has a minigun and can't be killed. So oh, he's kind of like shit. a Krampus juggernaut, if you will. Right. Uh, there are, there's a communist Santa. Um, he's just walking around. He's communist. I, I nice. And then there's these uh, players that put on antlers and they walk around with their M4s and they're called the pain deer. And the only oh, way to deter the pain deer is you have to sing a Christmas song. 
like, <laughs> it, it's just a whole bunch of like dumb autistic airsoft bullshit. <laughs> That's holiday awesome. theme doesn't make any sense, but it's oh yeah, uh, it's it's a stupid but fun event. I mean. Nothing yeah. is more retarded than hiding behind a barricade, getting shot at by some dudes wearing antlers, and the only thing you could say to make them go away is "Silent night." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not so silent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like just start singing Christmas songs and say, uh-huh. around the Christmas tree. Like, oh, that's they, awesome. Second, they hear a bunch of assholes singing, like they just turn around and walk away, like fifty feet. We're like, that's great. <laughs> So I, I guess the secret for that one is uh, sing all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, <laughs> it's a great event to play after Thanksgiving with your belly full. It's belly yeah. full of turkey. Just go out, see all your buddies and stuff. So that's, that's, that's a fun cool, one man. to look forward to it. Okay. And then, and then we might be doing a little bit of uh, indoor airsoft uh, in December. Going down to the field in Rhode Island, Extreme Airsoft. for Oh, where yeah. They just, they just hosted EA Fest over there. Right. Which uh, a couple of the bros went out to that and oh, had a okay. good time. I unfortunately I was not able to make it. I already promised my dad I'd help him do yard work that day. So. Yeah, no, but, that's uh, cool, man. It's uh, I want to. I actually want to talk to uh, somebody uh, that's been to that because I haven't talked to anyone um, EA Fest? that's been to the EA Fest. Yeah, yeah. No, EA I've talked. You know, last year I did. I, last year I talked to a bunch of people that went, but I want to talk to somebody that went to this one. Uh, you know, recent. So Ruby went. Uh, yeah, Ruby. Okay. Perfect, oh, I need to have him on. Okay. Yeah, Ruby. Ruby. Because it's been a while since I've had him on here. Yeah. Um, but Ruby went. Uh, call sign Honey Badger went. Oh, Honey and, Badger. Shoot. And uh, Poet. Poet went as well. Okay. Um, uh, who, who else was there? I know Jet Desert Fox was there. Leah was there. Okay. Uh, Random Guy Kev was there. All right. Uh, Tristan Art and Airsoft. I don't know if you've yep, seen him. Yep. The, I've had him on here. Yeah. I know. Meme Lord Daddy, right? As I call uh-huh. him. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, no, a couple of the bros went down uh, to meet up with Ruby and the guys and just, nice. just chat. I played some airsoft. have a good time. Uh, man, I, I wish I could have gone. But EA Fest has been going on for years. And I think it's really picking up traction now, especially after mm-hmm. COVID. Yep. Um, like most things airsoft, everything's picking up traction after COVID. Yeah. But uh, – I uh, I plan on putting that in the schedule for our team next year. We definitely want to go down and you know network with everybody. Sure. It's been it's basically like a huge like East Coast networking event if you think about it. Right. Like it. I mean, everybody just goes down. You just play airsoft, hang out with a bunch of friends and stuff you've been chatting with mm-hmm. online. You should come out to it next year, man. Like, well, it know. it uh, it attracts. Uh, well, I was saying this last year when uh, I talked to people that had uh, gone to the one last year, and I I was like, yeah. They were like, hey, you need to come out to this one this year. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I do. And then we went to Utah for two weeks. And uh, and then, yeah, so. I know. think I think the date is actually already released for next year, if I'm really? correct. Yeah. It's, uh, let me see if I can find it. I think it's on their Facebook or something. Let me. Uh, oh, okay. Me so that's why it. I never find any of these uh, things out. I don't get on Facebook. Um, oh, yeah. I, I got to be on Facebook. I A lot of these. Event coordinators post a lot of stuff on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, EA. No, it's a. Uh, Let's schedule. Uh, EA first. EA first. Maybe it's on their website. It's supposed to be like the same weekend every year. Oh, okay. So, so I've been told. Yeah. Extreme Airsoft. Because I follow their page. Oh, there it is. Let's see if they got it. So it was the 14-year okay. anniversary. Was the yeah, right, right. 9.22. So, it should be the weekend of 9.21 next year. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, but right. 
I'm probably going to call them and confirm that and then put it on the schedule and book hotels and stuff like that for the bros. Right. But, uh, yeah, how far you guys are not far from there? We're only we're only 2 hours. Oh, My house that's is only good. 2 dude. hours from that field. Like it's it's not a bad drive at all. Right. Um that's why the team's been talking. We're like, hey, why don't we do some indoor airsoft this winter? We're like, yeah, sure. Why the hell not? I mean, we're mostly an outdoor Milson team, but. You know, I was going to say, have you guys ever done uh, Speedsoft? So, uh, actually, great segue. Um, I just went to Florida and played Speedsoft for the first time. In 10 oh, shit. Years of okay. airsoft, I've never even done an airsoft, an indoor field. So. Did you post about the- it? I think I saw. I did. You I were met in Florida. For- yeah, I met up with Strike Entertainment and the Obey Airsoft team down at CIA Tampa. And uh, what an amazing facility that they have down there, by the way. It's just... That's what I've heard. They, oh, my God. It's just incredible. Great pro shop, just great community, and uh, really, really great field. Um, they showed me a lot of the ins and outs and stuff of it. I kind of got yeah. a private tour for being friends with Ant. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ant. Was, yeah, Ant is, Ant is awesome. He's a lot of fun. Yeah. And, uh, not only did I get to you know play some of the indoor airsoft and stuff, but uh, Ant hooked me up with his uh, his HBA competition gun for the day. Oh shit! And, nice. Uh, yeah, which was yeah, it's a nice it's a nice piece of hardware for sure. I'm sure. <laughs> but, yeah, because uh, there's uh who's all out there? I've talked to a handful of people out there at CIA Tampa, oh, Obey man. Airsoft. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I actually even got to play a little bit of the Speed QB on the on the course too. Nice. You know, a couple a couple end to ends and stuff and. Yeah, not not for me. I am not fast enough or in shape enough for that. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not. Uh, crap. Uh-uh. Dude, I was the first one off the field every single time. <laughs> like, I, I, I pushed off hard. I'm just spamming that trigger and just, nope, I'm hit. Damn it. Uh-huh. Like, ugh, it, man, it is, it is very, very, very competitive. Yeah. Sure. And those guys that do it often, they just, it, they see airsoft and they see that sort of like CQB behavior in a different sense. Yep. Uh, that being said, they know the field. Yeah. Well, they know the field. They, they just know the corners and yep. they know where, where people are and where they will be because they've just ran that scenario a million times, mm-hmm. a million different ways. And uh, the, the skill definitely shows, but where I felt I had a little bit more of an upper hand was when I played the, um, and just the indoor skirmish part of it, right? Yeah. What well, you know, just running through the field and you know, breaching buildings and stuff. Gotcha. Uh, a lot of the other people I was teamed up with, they didn't want to push. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Which happens in every airsoft field and every airsoft game, sure, right? Sure. Yeah. You run into those players that it's like it's their first time or maybe only their second time. And so, what know, do they do? Just find a spot to hide behind and just sit. Yeah, there? find a spot to hide behind and then peek over it. And I'm just like, no, 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 the objective's over there. Just walk to it. Huh. We'll get shot. And I'm like, then you walk back to respawn and go back again. Like, you're not going to get shot. <laughs> like, like, I don't. Like, what you... You're playing airsoft. What are you? <laughs> oh, oh, that's crazy. But no, I flipped the objective point a couple times. It was fun. And, uh, but yeah, no, I, I had such a blast down there. Next time Good. I go to Florida, I'm not sure when, but next time I go, I'll, uh, I'll definitely be reaching out to Ant again and be like, yo, hey, I'm back in Tampa. Let's go hit the field. Let's, Let's go. go. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. They're open seven days a week, which is wow, which is awesome in my opinion. I was chatting. Yeah, with it a is. Of, I was chatting with a couple of the regulars down there. They're just like, "Oh yeah, I'm here every day after work." Like, really? They're like, "Yep." Get off at work at five. I'm at the airsoft field for five thirty. I got the the yearly membership or the the monthly membership, whatever it is. Oh they wow! Have. And just like this is gym to me. This, this is what oh, I do. That's, I, that's a smart thing that they've done. Is uh, the, yeah, exactly. And I'm just like that's actually a really great idea i wish there was something like that close by to me because yeah the the closest indoor field for me is two hours away so like i'm not about to i'm not about to get off of work drive two hours go play yourself for an hour drive two hours like no not Uh, doing that but i mean if there was something along my route home like this one guy i was chatting with i mean that's that's just ideal you know yeah stop after work if you're doing the uh monthly thing or whatever like you you don't have to pay every single time you go in you know you just bring your gear you go uh, right. And the thing is right. about the indoor stuff too is, you don't you're, you know it's way different than mill sims. You don't have to bring a you know hundred pounds of gear. No, you don't. No, yeah, I, I went like, with, I went with just a chest rig, a simple chest rig, three mags in the front, and that's all yep. I brought. 
That's really yeah. it. And I, I had a blast. I mean, I was, I was talking with Ant. He goes, "Yeah, even what you wore for a chest rig." Because I had the, I have a dangler on my chest yeah. rig just because of the Milson and stuff I do. He right. goes, "Yeah, you want to wear the least amount of padding, the least amount mm-hmm. of everything as possible, because." when you're in that close quarters environment and because the jewel limit or these guns are shooting a lot softer than they Mm -hmm. would be at outdoor games. uh, When you hit somebody in a piece of gear, they're a lot less likely likely to call it because they simply just don't feel it. Right. And that's where a lot of like the indoor hit arguments stem from is because these players are wearing too much gear. Yeah. And, it, I never even considered that as being a problem for indoor airsoft. I've watched mm-hmm. a ton of indoor airsoft videos. I'm just like, ah, how'd that guy not feel it? it? It hit his gear. He should have heard it. Right. No. Like, they got loud music playing. They got yeah. lights flashing on and off. People are like, yelling commands back and forth or t- like, saying like, something. It, it, gets, or... it gets pretty loud in there. Some people are just wearing headphones while they run around and play. Like, yep. you really need to be able to feel it uh-huh. more so than anything else. So... Like you said, the least amount of gear that you wear, the better. And that's uh, that's something. Whenever I go play indoor airsoft again, when I go down to extreme airsoft later this year, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring a very bare minimalist yeah. kit, and I'm going to rock that so I make sure that I can feel my hits, not just hear them. Well, um, this is one of the things that uh, when I was talking to you know, I uh, it seems like I go on these. Um, uh, you know, gr- I'll talk to the same type of, you know, groups of players uh, for like a month, right? I'll get yeah. a bunch of speed softers in a row, a bunch of people in the UK in a row, a bunch of people in the mill sims in a row. And uh, we were talking a few months ago, probably over the summer before summer about all the speed soft stuff. And I was like, you know, uh, and, and obviously the no calling, you know, yeah, yeah, people yeah. not calling her hits thing came up and it was, uh, I was like, what if, And and actually, uh, I think the way it started, the conversation was about um, why is it that we don't see these uh, these kind of cheater videos going rampant online uh, in paintball? And I said, uh, and one of the guys was like, I don't know. It's uh, I said, probably because you don't see little kids out there. You don't see 12, 13, 14 year olds out there. And most of the videos we've seen, the rage videos, most of them are younger. They're younger than 20. And, you know, uh, and I said, so. Well, if that's the case, why aren't 14 year olds out playing paintball? And we came to the conclusion that, you know, we're just speculating, but uh, because it freaking hurts, it hurts worse than, uh, than airsoft. So that and, is more, and that is more expensive. I don't way know more expensive. Kind of, I don't know what kind of 14 year old can go to a field and pay $65 oh, for a box. Bro, of seriously, I mean, that's another factor for sure. So there's a couple factors there, but one of them is. Uh, you know, I, one of the fixes we were kind of deciding or thinking of is that for indoor airsoft have, um, uniform requirements. So like, or, you know, apparel. So like, uh, you can only wear, uh, a t-shirt, like your, your legs don't matter, whatever. Cause most people, yeah. you know, whatever, but like you, most of the time you're going to get hit from the waist up. So, yeah. uh, full mask, whatever you want to wear on your head. But, uh, as far as your torso, no hoodies, no thick material, and no uh, baggy like paintball looking like jerseys. You know that that uh, that the yeah. BBs are going to bounce off of, and you're not going to feel it. Like something uh, that makes you're going to have to have a little bit of pain. You know, I mean, yeah. just a sting. And that's um, the thing. Like, so you I, so you feel it. I went home. Like I, my first day of vacation, I was playing airsoft at CNA Tampa. It was my <laughs> first day of vacation. Like I nice. got up that morning. I stole my aunt's car and I drove to Tampa. Oh shit! Your wife's <laughs> like, "Oh, look at this guy." Oh, my wife was fine. My aunt and uncle took her out on the boat. They were hanging oh, out okay. in the in the Gulf of Mexico, watching the dolphins, went oh, to that's a bar. Awesome. Like she had a blast with it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Iron anniversary, my guy. We're on the Iron anniversary. Okay, <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> yes. So I go, I play all day, and when I talk to Ant like the week before, and I'm just like, hey, so what should I bring for your chest rig and stuff? He goes, wear thin clothing. Uh, if you want to wear log sleeves, that's up to you. I would suggest it. And he just said, also, be prepared to get hit a lot. I'm mm-hmm. like, what do you mean get hit a lot? He's just like, it's indoor airsoft. These BBs are flying like crazy. You're going to be hit a lot. A lot, just dude. Just expect it. 
and I was definitely hit a lot. My my stomach inside, I had chicken pox, dude. I swear to God. Like, <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I come back from indoor airsoft. You know, I, I come back to the house. My aunt and uncle, my wife and everybody are there. They're like, how was it? I'm like, oh, it was an absolute blast. Like, I had so much fun with the guys. But, man, am I – I'm sweaty. I'm just going to take a shower and stuff before we go out on the boat and we go to dinner and whatnot. So I, I go upstairs. I take my shirt off, right? My wife comes upstairs to grab something for the bedroom, looks yeah. at me with my shirt off. She's like, oh, my God, are you okay? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, why? She goes, look at all those welts. And I'm like, oh, my oh yeah, God. It's, it's indoor airsoft. Like, I got hit a lot. What, what, do, you, what do you want from me? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, that's crazy! Like, like, what do you expect? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I hit other people too, but I also got hit a lot. Like, I played a lot of rounds. Like, I think it was more so the uh, the the speed softing on the speed soft field because I didn't yeah. get any, I didn't get any kills on the speed soft. Field. <laughs> <laughs> I was the first one out every time at the speed soft. Field. Oh, that's crazy! And not, not from a lack of trying, just because. Sure. I, I mean, like I. I, inexperience. I, I don't know. I'm just inexperienced. Like I've yeah, never done it. Absolutely before. right. Like, totally it, different game. Totally different game. Strike the only thing that's against me. Like of course. Oh god. Yeah. Me up. Like what am I going to do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that's like you know the yeah that's definitely yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sure. But now if you yeah. ever if you ever do have the chance to get down to Florida. um, and in the Tampa area, definitely go check out CIA, even just for like an hour or so. Really great community. Yeah, really I need. Well, there. we're we're talking about going uh, next spring or summer to uh, Florida because my cousin lives down there. Oh, what area? And, um, he's in uh, Ocala. It's in the middle of the state. Yeah, so that's that's north. Ocala. Let me see where that's at, actually. Yeah, so that's Ocala, north of Tampa. City in Florida. Yeah, that's north of, uh, of Tampa, yeah. So he's been up here a handful of times over the last 10, 12 years. Oh, and you haven't um, visited him? And I haven't visited him. Oh, <laughs> uh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, look, look, look. In look, my defense, in my defense... You're in your in your defense, what? <laughs> I mean, um, uh, we we had we had more kids than them, and I worked more overtime, mandatory overtime than him until I got paralyzed. So, and then once I was paralyzed, I couldn't uh, I couldn't drive. So, um, you know, well, I mean, I can't like I can now I can now. It sounds like a lot of excuses. That's what I, I mean. Saying. You know, it's uh, it sounds good. Okay, it sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's uh, he's come up here. Uh, eight, I mean, Ocala? three years. Hell yeah. Ocala, so that's not yeah. that far from Tampa. It's only an hour and a half. That's not far it's at all. Not even. Yeah, so dude. My aunt and uncle, they live in Bradenton or Bradenton, Florida, okay. uh, which is about an hour south of CIA Tampa. Oh, OK. And yeah, I just literally I, I just hopped on I-75 and I just took an entire hour north like it was. No traffic like, well, actually, there was. There was traffic because there was an accident, but I only sat in like five minutes of traffic and I was good to go. Oh, that's so, good. Yeah. Okay. I but see. No. Um, man. Yeah. Okay. I didn't realize uh, Tampa was – I thought Tampa was down by Miami. I don't know why I thought that, but okay. – uh, Opposite sides. Yeah. Miami yep. is further south. It's way and, down, yeah. Right. Yeah. So Tampa, when you leave Tampa Bay, you actually head out into the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. Right. Which, uh, subsequently, that's where uh, where I spent uh, where I swam a lot. I should say because um, my aunt, like I said, my aunt and uncle they live in Bradenton or Bradenton. I still don't know how to fucking pronounce it. I'm, I don't I'm, either. I'm just, <laughs> I guess I'm autistic or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, they live in a really nice, like gated community. It's like ooh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, really. Retired three star general, like what do you expect? Oh, dude? shit, from the United States Air Force. So, oh, pension. shit, Ooh. yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. 32 years of service to the United States government. Man. I mean, yeah, bro, okay, but uh, oh crap, I just I was just zooming in on the area and I found his house. I'm uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice, I'm trying to find um, I cannot remember, I, I've been to Florida once in my life. Mm -hmm. Saint something, 
St. Pete? And, no, it's a... Uh, God, I can't see. I don't see it. I thought it was by Daytona, but it's like a really, I think, a popular like um, golf course. Like, hmm. oh man. Anyway, that's this is where uh, I went there. This is probably um, eighteen to twenty years ago. <laughs> San or Saint um, Augustine? That's it. Saint Augustine. Okay, Thank so they have a really beautiful golf course like resort there. Hmm. Um, I don't know where it's at. I'll have to look it up on the map here. Uh, but anyway, that was the only place I've been in Florida. So, oh, here it is. It's way up north from, uh, if you follow the coastline up from Daytona, it is south of Jacksonville. Right on the beach. Yeah, it's beautiful out there too. But anyway, that was the only, uh, I went there for a business conference actually. This is, you know, like I said, 20 years ago and um, yeah. met up with some uh, some rich people that were very wealthy and uh, successful in business that I was uh, learning from and, uh, so it was it was awesome man we spent four days out there jen and i hell yeah it's so pretty man we've actually talked about moving to the florida because of my cousin out there you know we have family and then it's so pretty yeah. but man the uh the humidity bro uh, yeah that's that's what did me in dude honestly yeah. like i oh it's too miserable i i love i love the people i love the places right. And I love the governor, but uh, yeah, I just, I mean, I'm New Hampshire born and raised, man. Like I hate winter up here. Sure. But yeah, I love it's a drastic America. change though. It is. It's huge. And um, well, I that's what uh, I just talked to somebody the other day and they said they, um, they lived in Florida for quite a few years and they, as they got older, they moved from Florida to South Carolina because it's a little less, yeah, you know, it's a little yeah. more comfortable. The heat uh -huh. is not as bad, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yep. hell yeah, man. Listen, Ugh. bro, it's been uh, it's been great talking with you again, huh? Yeah, dude, it's been awesome. I always, I always yeah. love fucking chatting with you, buddy. It's been I know, long. man. You too, bro. <laughs> you I'm too, Mo, you. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, dude, I'm glad you're doing well, and uh, thanks, I hope man. You look, hope you look forward to that that movie later tonight. I hope you got to let me know what you oh, think. Oh, dude, because uh, oh, I'm gonna go good. look it up right now. Where I need where it's uh, what it's on. Passengers. Uh, you could probably you might be able to rent it on Amazon. To be honest. Yeah, let me look and see what uh, what platform it's on here. Yeah, but no, definitely, that's one of my favorites for sure. Hopefully, other sixteen comments. film. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, man. Um uh yeah, great time. Thank you so much for all the stories and uh and it was yeah, good catching up with you. Yeah, dude. We'll see it again yeah. soon. All Absolutely. Right? All right, brother. Have a good night, buddy. You too, man.